Hey yo! Welcome friends! Um, wow, alright, we're doing this. I was I was not sure I'd be streaming tonight, let me tell you. Uh, this cold has been kicking my ass. My door just opened, but my cat isn't in here. I'll be right back. Right, yeah, so, uh, fucking cold. Turned into, um... You know, headache mode type shit earlier today, but it's gone now, so let's go. Um, but yeah, I do reserve the right to uh, just ending the stream early today if it gets as bad as it was this afternoon. Um, right, 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 so a few announcements. I've mentioned it on stream, but I want to say this again. Um, we're going to have two specials coming up, both of them on Final Fantasy XIV neither of which I can give you a precise date for at this time. Uh, probably they'll be on Sunday afternoons, uh, like we've done with uh, our remake Rush before Rebirth came out. In uh, one of them we'll be trying to redo Aerith's house from from remake, but in Final Fantasy XIV, in the house that Loom Loom bought for me. And in the other one we'll be playing the 16 uh, X14 crossover. Hey ZA, thanks for being here! I'm sure we'll be okay. I'm sure we'll be okay. Again, if it if it gets too much, we'll just uh, we'll just call it a day early a night early tonight. I'll be fine. Thank you for being here, ZA. Um, the yes, right. So two specials coming up on Sunday. I'm not sure when. Uh, we are done with the Yuffie DLC. I'll be talking about that more in a second, but that also means that our Tuesday slots are finally free to go back to OG. And Ever Crisis. Uh, I actually haven't decided just yet on what we'll be playing next Tuesday, and that will depend a bit on how far we get into the story tonight. I don't want to say too much about it, but you can probably guess. Well, well I can say this: is that uh, you know, Ever Crisis' story is much shorter, uh, which means that there's a chance that with just one Tuesday stream, uh, we will overtake where we're at in Rebirth. Uh, and I'm not sure I want to do that when it's closed. You know, it's not like. If the game was way ahead, then it would make sense, but yeah, OG is the one that's the furthest back. So, I don't know, I'll, I'll call it at the end of the stream. Uh, if you have strong feelings about which one, which of the games you want us to play on Tuesday, let me know. Uh, I can absolutely be convinced one way or the other. Uh, but yeah, most likely it will be OG on Tuesday. Back with the funky accents and shit, I need to, uh, to work on that some more, because fuck, it's been forever, it's been forever. This is what this channel was supposed to be all about, playing all three versions simultaneously, or in parallel, at the very least. Um, and yeah, with, with everything that's happened, we haven't really been doing that, but we'll get back on track! We'll start really doing that from now on. So yeah, this Tuesday, probably OG, maybe EC. Um, I'll, I'll set it instant at the end of this year's stream. Uh, I feel like there were more random news item. Have you seen how fucking amazing the room is? Well, yeah, I know you've seen it because you've, you're the one that's been doing it, but... Yeah, this is really starting to look fucking great. And, uh, it's not starting to look fucking great. I think it looks great. I think it looks fucking great. I love it. Uh, we still have more... Still other little things that we're working on with ZA to make it even better. So stay, stay tuned! Alright! Tonight, we are back to Rebirth. Um, but before that, I kind of want to debrief uh, the Yuffie DLC. Um, so when we started with this whole thing, and again, I, I'm kind of like walking on the eggs here because I don't want to say anything too spoilery, but you guys have probably... I mean, you know. Alright, let's assume you've only ever watched my streams and never ever played any of the Final Fantasy VII games. We know that Yuffie... We're not done with Yuffie yet, right? This story would make no fucking sense if we were. Um, and so it's interesting that we haven't met her in neither, you know, mainstream main, main remake or Rebirth just yet, but we kind of know she's going to come back, right? Because otherwise, what was the whole thing about? Um, and the really fucking interesting thing is that she's so... Barra and Tifa with her own eyes. And now you guys might remember me rambling about this. It's one specific aspect of this whole project that, that I really wanted to focus on is can we assume that things we see in one of the three versions of the game that are not in the main game are canon if there is nothing contradicting it the other way? 
Uh, so, you know, perfect example for that is Jessie. Everything we've learned in Remake, you know, that was not part of OG. Her character was not that fleshed out. We had no idea she was actually a girl from Topside, uh, from a rather well-off family, and with a father that, that worked at Shinra, of all things, and that, you know, she's here, well, you know, she's, she's this kind of, of uh, characters. Uh, we didn't have all that before. Uh, does it make sense to assume that the Jesse we met in OG7, even though we didn't get that backstory, since we got no backstory whatsoever, you know, is, is stuff that is a additional, in a way, in one of the games, um, does it just make sense to, you know, say, well, it probably the same is true of the other ones. Anyway, back to Yaffe. Uh, that's a really in interesting question to ask. Was Yaffe in Midgar in OG7? Was she in Midgar in Ever Crisis? We don't know yet. Uh, well, I don't know yet, um, but I do think that we have a very, you know, it won't be a hard confirm one way or the other, uh, it won't tell us if we feel like we get a clue that Yuffie was in Midgar, uh, that will not be definite proof that we can assume that Jesse lived, grew up topside in OG, I'm just saying, you know, we can get little hints one way or the other. Um, and so the fact that she's actually seen Para Antifa with her own eyes, that's, that's a really big deal, right? Because if they are to meet again in Rebirth, uh, then her reaction should be different, right? Like, she knows who those people are. Uh, did she in OG? We'll see all that when we play those games. Anyway, um, I'm really excited about that. Just that, you know, will we get a clear nod at the fact that she was in Midgar? Um, or not? We shall see. We shall see. If and when we meet her again. Uh, the second thing was the fucking ending. There was a lot to unpack there. Um, I was in Fingway on Tuesday, and so I kind of just, you know, like, stopped the, the stream at the end of it and said we'd discuss it again. Um, and it was really interesting. So a lot, it was a lot of action there. So of course there's the big sad moment. I don't think we need to discuss this over much, apart from the fact that I feel like us OG players kind of knew that was coming because this character just, you know, he was new. It sort of made sense that it'd be out of picture by the end of the thing, is all I'm saying. Uh, but apart from that, when Yuffie walks out of the major spoilers for uh, intermission, obviously, what I'm about to say now. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna put my little... No, I'm not gonna put my little tag up. Um, because it's stuff that we've seen on stream together. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, right, so, major spoilers for intermission coming. But... When she walks out of Shinra HQ, she runs out of Shinra HQ, there's this whole cataclysmic thing happening. It's unclear what exactly is going on, but the obvious answer, there's like fire everywhere and shit. Uh, the obvious answer is that the Sector 7 plate just fell down, right? That's most likely what it is. GJ, the mainstream avalanche operative guy, he knew about it. This actually explains, uh, you know, a, a, not a plot hole, but a mystery in Remake. It was how did the... Um, Avalanche folks know about it and go to try and defend the pillar. Well, thanks to Gigi and his group, who actually had that intel. Um, so yeah, this is this is the most likely. I've uh, I've spoken about this with both Zia and Krieger offline about the timeline. So you know, like we know that when the Yuffie DLC started, we were it was during the operation of uh, Macro Reactor Five. I did what I kind of forgotten. Hey, Marm! Hello! Thanks for being here! How are you feeling? I'm a lot fucking better, as you can see. And I decided to go on with the stream, which is a good sign, I guess. Or maybe I just really like streaming, which I do. But anyway, I'm feeling a lot better than earlier today when we spoke, and I hope it's the same for you. Um... The... Yes, yes, right. So, I actually, I kind of forgotten last week, um about the fact that we actually see Barra Antifa coming back from that operation. And again, they filled in a lot of holes there with just that quick scene. It's really beautiful in a, um, I'm biased by prologue, but I've been, shit, that's a long ass prologue, but never mind. let's take, let's take three. Um, it's actually a, a huge influence on the way I do those things, like the way I try to talk about it and what I choose to tell you guys and not tell you guys with regards to the lore and shit. Uh, one of the huge influences is Preston Jacobs. He's not a streamer per se. He's actually a theorist uh, for Song of Ice and Fire, the novels. Um, so he makes those YouTube videos, uh, he's been doing it for years now, where he talks about the books and theories of his and his, you know, like, 
famous, some would say infamous for his theories. Uh, they're, they're, they're often very much out there. There's also very often parts of them that are true. Anyway, it's not about Preston Jacobs. So what I'm saying is that he started this new series um, just recently where he just goes through the whole books again, starting from page one, essentially. Uh, but unlike before, it's live now, where he usually, ed you know, he had edited stuff and like scripted, etc. Whereas now he just reads it and like discusses it live. Um, well, not live, but with no cuts or anything. It's just one very long shot of him reading the book and commenting it. What was I talking about, Preston Jacobs? I have no fucking thing. Uh, it was about the Yuffie DLC, I guess. Timeline thing. <laughs> Ow. Never mind. I'm 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 sick. Let's say let's say that's my excuse. Um Yeah, so looking back at the when I rewatched like my playthrough of the first or first half of the DLC, I real I I, I I you know reminded myself that yeah we actually see the end of the Mako 5 operation. So when Yuffie leaves, uh, Cloud is already, you know, at Aerith's probably, I'd say roughly speaking. So it all makes sense. What I'm saying is that it makes sense that she'd walk out of the Shinra HQ as the Sector 7 play is falling. If, you know, I don't know how long we spent there. Uh, in real life it was, you know, less than three hours for sure, but we don't know how late at night she got there. And um, I think it would make sense that our ellipses, let's not get into that just now, but you know, is the time we see while we're playing actually the time that goes on or is it sometimes it's actually a really interesting question, maybe I'll talk about it during the stream today. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting carried, carried off again. Uh, my point is that, yeah, no, I, I thought about the timeline again, you know, ZA specifically, we spoke about this. It makes sense. It makes sense that Yuffie walks out as the uh, Sector 7 plates are falling down. Anyway, all this to say that we saw that and then, uh, you know, we saw them, uh, both our gang, walking out of Midgar, which we know took place fairly shortly after that. And Yuffie as well, we don't know how long that ellipse was, but you know, she's on Chocobo back and she seems to have gotten over uh, the fucking traumatic events of the end of the DLC. And then, and that's what I want to talk about, we have this fucking Zack scene. And as always, when there's a Zack scene, uh, so far in the remake Rebirth experience, it's extremely fucking strange and raises a lot of questions and does not answer any of the questions we already have. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, Krieger's. Actually, you know, like Krieger's words were, what the fuck was that? Is that yet another timeline? And I totally agree that this is the first impression that I had as well. So what we see is Zack knocking on the door of uh, Aerith's church, right? Uh, it, it's clear that it's been a while since he's seen her. And then he opens the door and instead, inside are a bunch of people that look distressed. Uh, no, if you ask me, they are refugees. And also the way this whole ending with all its different segments you know, like, uh, maybe not cinematographically speaking, but um, from a scenario writing point of view, uh, if you get my meaning, I feel like we're supposed to assume that this scene takes place after the Sector 7 plate fell down. And so the, the question, Krieger's, you know, question, uh, is it yet another timeline? Is it a third timeline? <coughs> it clearly can't be, or... It would be extremely strange if it was the Z timeline, as I've been calling it, that we also got a glimpse of in the intro uh, to Rebirth, right? Where Zack actually arrives in Midgar with Cloud, leaves Cloud with Kyrie, goes and saves Aerith. So I guess, you know, you could maybe, like, if you, if, you, if you twist things around long enough, I'm sure you can work that in, like, oh, so, you know, Aerith is passed out, he drops her off at her mom's or whatever, goes off and does his own thing and then a few days later he comes back to check in on her and that's why he's dead because they didn't really speak so sure that could make sense but it sounds weird everything seems you know but like contrived to make that work whereas you know Krieger's first knee-jerk reaction which was mine too like oh my god is this a third fucking timeline Zack is in Midgar after the, the the Sector 7 plate fell down what is going on well actually what if this what if this was our main rebirth timeline. What if Zack is in Midgar right now and he went to see Aerith but he did not save her like in the weird Z timeline, just, you know, they've missed each other. Um, and I think that with the very little information that we have at this point is what makes the most sense. But again, we'll have answers to all of this, I'm guessing, um, in rebirth. 
so with that, my friends, previously on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, actually not much happened last time. Um, we went through the Mithril Mine, we met the last of the Turks, the last addition to the Turks, Elena. Um, but this is all, you know, more or less anecdotal. We're still kind of on the hunt for Sephiroth, uh, and so all those folks, I've been calling them reunion people, Marco was one of them, we've met them again in Yafis TLC, the weird robed shadowy figures that we now know from two different sources, uh, are ex-soldier candidates that were kind of just dismissed by Shinra and so now they have Mako poisoning and all kinds of terrible shit. Not unlike our boy Cloud, but unlike him, you know, they seem to be in a much worse state. And they always kind of head towards the same place, and Cloud seems convinced that they are headed towards Sephiroth. So we've just decided to follow those people rather than helping them or offering them a drink of water or whatever. Uh, and they're headed to Junon. So normally we should be in Junon right now, but me being me, we're going to explore the whole area instead before we actually move there. We've already started, we've got a new Chocobo. Um, and let's carry on doing just that, exploring the Junion region, and with that, my friends, I'd say, uh, let's fucking go. Alright! Rebirth, motherfucker! I'm excited. Look at this shit, like, on the very, you know, like, thingy, Zack is there. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that, that Zack would be in Midgar, and we're gonna meet him. And again, I, I, I dug myself in this weird hole of I know more than my own spoiler policy and there's things I can't say about Zaki Noji. That's, you know, obviously what this is all about. Alright, my friends, I... What do, we, what do we got? We've got another tower here. I believe that's a tower. So, probably a good idea from Past Morgan to head there first. Excuse me. What was that again? We've got a side quest. Oh yeah, we caught the new Chocobo to go and get the parts needed to repair Gabe's carriage from the Wainwright. We could do that, we could do that first actually. Let's go help Gabe out. So this is our first objective, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, let's fucking get it. Um, why do we do that? I, um... I still don't remember why I told you guys about Preston Jacobs in the intro, and I hope that will come back to me. If only because I'm extremely curious now, like, what? What is the connection between Preston and fucking Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission? Um, but, that, you know, made me think and rumble a bit about this thing about when we're playing a video game, right, such as Let's take a wild example, any world work. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, yeah, let's go with that. When we play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you know, like... For instance, I play the Yafi DLC and it takes me about three hours to get through half of the story. That's not where I climb this fucking thing, is it? But then again... Oh, or maybe I can climb down from there? Can I fast travel there? Yeah, let's try that. Um... So yeah, it is fairly, you know, it's it's a game that is fairly, I want to say photorealistic, which is not, this is about how it looks, and that's not what I'm talking about, but what I'm saying is that my chocobo right there is moving at about the pace you expect the chocobo to move, right? Why would you expect anything about how chocobos move in an imaginary world, Morgan? I don't know, but you know what I'm saying is that it's clear that there's not, it's not one of those games where you like hop up on a ship and then you get a black loading screen and then you're somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? It's all... It seems like the, the time passing is just about the same... The characters experience the same time passing as we are as Watchers. A fight takes exactly as long as the fight takes, and so on and so forth. I shut up while we go bother the Hermit, and we'll get back to that in a second. Can I help you? We're trying to fix Gabe's cart. Ah, oh, so you're looking for parts. Well, you'll have to come back tomorrow, or the day after. I'm too tired to help you right now. I feel you, man. Hmm. I think a swift kick could get him Dude. up. Dude. Oh shit, do we wake him up gently or with magic? I don't really know what being woken up with magic is like. But I'm guessing that means Aerith does it instead of Cloud, which is probably a good idea. 
Shall we go with that? Let's go with that. Wake up! <sighs> Whoa! You're not serious, are you? <sighs> Scared me half to death. I didn't mean threaten him with magic. What the fuck? You wanna get my ass up? Then you bring me exactly what's on that list. Got it? Well. I say we get his ass up. <laughs> Materials for the Wayne right. Oh, I need to move myself. Give me just a second, sorry. I think that was the spot. Use the Wayne Wright's map and your chocobo sense of smell to locate the materials buried throughout the region. Press the thingy to view his map. To examine it more closely, press L1. Oh, this, this is cute! And completely unfucking decipherable. Oh no, it's not too bad actually. Alright, so this is this peninsula. And we've got one. <laughs> I like that he drew a little chocobo in the corner with the little exclamation marks and shit. Alright, so I'd say our first objective is somewhere around here. Does that sound about right? How do I stick the pin? Um, and then... The biggest thing is... Junon, is it? I'm afraid it is. Mm -mm -mm. Tell you what, you guys, I wanna... S yeah, I wanna start with this. Let's go there first, and then we'll head back and get the... Uh, all the shit for the Wayne right? Just in case we accidentally move into Junon, which I'm sure would be fine, but... Anyway. Mm -hmm. What? Then you read the list? Everything I need is written right there. <laughs> Alright. So, time passing in Final Fantasy seems to be realistic. And what I mean by that, again, is that you can just assume that when when we watch a scene unfold or a fight unfold, you know, the amount of time we spend actually fighting whatever it is we're fighting, we perceive it as the same amount of time as, you know, our characters would in world. So if a fight takes me 15 minutes to clear, uh, that's a fight that actually lasted... Jeez, thanks. Well, uh, oh wait, because I'm told you at the wrong place, my bad. I love that music though. Now, where this gets interesting is that if you really assume that this is... You know, if you push this thinking... Oh, can I actually...? Yeah, that path goes on, right? So I start there. Can I fast travel? Yes, I can fast travel anywhere. Awesome. Um, now, with that thinking in mind... You know... Yuffie's DLC, again, I don't remember any obvious loading screen type situation, right, during the DLC where um, it would be fair to assume, oh, like the amount of time we as humans playing a video game experience was like 30 seconds, say, but it actually could have been hours for them. Uh, remind me if I'm forgetting any such potential occurrences, you know, and again, it doesn't have to be a literal loading screen, it can be an ellipse at some point where, I don't know, like after we got... Scarlet in um, what do you call it in in custody? Could it could uh, like a very long time have happened before we actually get the scene where they're trying to get info out of her and it's not really working out, or was it just a few seconds? You know what I'm saying. There are ellipses happening. Is that does it mean the same thing in English? An ellipse in the sense of you know narratively speaking, um, <laughs> at amount of time. Yes. Where to, Birdie? Where'd you go? Up there. Yes, I see ya. Eh. How do I get up there, though? Not helpful, birdie! Let's go get the tower. Um, right, so in this specific case, you know, I feel fairly confident saying that Yefi and Sonan did not spend, I don't know, 12 hours, 24 hours in Shinra HQ. Maybe it was not as short as the, whatever, 2 hours and a half, 2 hours 15 it got us to get through that part. 
uh, because of some small ellipses, but there were no huge ellipses that would justify this whole sequence taking, you know, an order of magnitude longer than it did as we experienced it. Um, another... Ooh, yeah, a lot of caches! Another thing where that's often, you know, like, there could obviously be ellipses, meaning lost time, if you will, where the in-game time goes on faster than the time it takes you, player, to experience, is traveling times. For instance, during Remake, whenever we rode the train to go from anywhere in Midgar to anywhere else, well, we have no idea um, how long it actually takes, right? It's usually, again, your, your typical case of just a loading screen and then we're at the arrival, so... I don't know, my intuition, you know, from the way I think about Midgar tells me that no train ride takes longer than, let's say, an hour tops, but maybe I'm very wrong and actually everything's fucking huge or their train system is really shit, I don't know. Maybe it takes them five to six hours uh, to get from point A to point B whenever we're in the... You okay, Riff? <laughs> you know how to swim, right? Um... Right, and I feel that like in Rebirth, we don't have that. With this whole, like, open world, semi-open world, whatever you want to call it, thing, um, when I travel from one point to the other on the world map, I feel like I'm seeing the actual real time it takes them to travel. And that's the whole thing, right, that I, I, I was thinking about with this whole, uh, how long did we spend in Shinra HQ, is... And I think it's it's particularly interesting and relevant in the case of, of uh, Remake here. But it's actually a question you can ask yourselves in most, you know, types of fiction. I feel like in, in um, film, uh, whether, whether, you know, feature-length films or television, but fiction um, on video, you know what I mean. Movies and series and shit. Um, shit. It's a lot less ambiguous, like, usually you are supposed to assume that everything is real-time unless there is an obvious um, ellipse. And, and, you know, like, you usually get a fucking indicator to, like, six months later or whatever. Um, so kind of like, you know, there's this unspoken rule when you watch a movie that you're supposed to assume that the time you're seeing on screen is the exact, you know, the characters are experiencing the same amount of time passing as you are. But in video games, it's a lot less clear. And again, with the... I feel like with modern video games, everything kind of looks to scale. So it's just fair to assume that... Fuck. That I'm... Actually traveling from uh, Calm to Junon right now. And that it takes Cloud exactly as long as it takes me to do it in the video game. It does for him in this reality. But... Back, you know, when... For older games... Again, I might use Final Fantasy as an example, but I'm sure it's true of... It's true of a great many different video games. Again, like open worlds aren't that recent a thing. Um, at least not it being the main or being so common as it is nowadays. It used to be really fucking rare and it's become a lot more common and almost expected. Um, extremely recently because the tech allows for that type of shit, right? Uh, when you play older Final Fantasies, you have a world map. But obviously the world map is tiny. It's just a few you know, like sizes, sprite sizes, like character sizes, and you can cross the whole continent in a few seconds. And you're not supposed to <coughs> assume from that that um, your airship or whatever way your black chocobo is so fucking efficient that you can just circle around the planet um, three times in, in one minute and a half, right? It is like, it's part of suspension of disbelief, and you're supposed to just assume that time is distorted. You experience time differently as a, the video game player than your like, actual characters do. Is that thing even defending itself? I feel bad beating it up. Possess! A Zemzelet is an avian creature that nests in forested regions. Equally capable on the ground as in the air, they use their giant wings to send prey soaring, finishing their victims off with electrified bursts of wind. Inflicting enough damage during wing beat will... Excuse me. Yeah. Pressure them. Alright. 
and this, I can't read the name because I'm a little rectangle, but it's a migratory avian creature that settles in that settles in fertile lands when it comes time to breed. They constantly keep an eye out for prey as they fly. Inflicting enough damage will cause them to retaliate with a violent attack, but evading this attack will pressure them. Alright. Nothing stealable, that's interesting. <laughs> She has the yes. It's kind of chakra in here. It's so weird to keep switching from one game to the next. Um, Why well, just don't do that, Mori? Yes, that's yes, very right. That's an easy way to get rid of the issue, but yeah. I was playing Remake earlier today, and uh, you know. <laughs> Everything is different! It's not even so much the uh, actual, you know, the fact that the gameplay's evolved, it's more the just which material I have on which character and all that. Good to go. I'm getting my ass kicked. But it's alright because I'm super sick and that's my excuse. Also, Krieger's not here, so I can be bad at the game and not get yelled at. Fuck, my hero is out of MP. Oh, God. Need to heal up. There's that ranged. God damn it, Cloud. Yes, alright. No, it's not looking good. Are you sick as well, Cloud? What the fuck are you doing? No! Oh, shit, that. I really thought that it killed it. Fuck me! Leave her alone! Jesus, alright. We're gonna go... <laughs> we're gonna rest the spell after this. <laughs> that was painful, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sick, okay? Um... Right, so, in all the Final Fantasy games, uh, where the world map was just this tiny little area, there was this obvious, you know, like, tacit an agreement that you are supposed to assume there's time dilation going on. And all this to say that to me it is not entirely clear when playing Rebirth. But just because things look and feel natural because the world is huge that I should, should assume that I have a perfect grasp on how long everything takes. And actually... If you assume that that's the case, it is so much more pressure on the devs, right? Um, Moogles! Is Chad gonna talk to us? No. And it also brings in a lot of... Um, so, you know, even among... Oh yeah, I want a bench. Where's the bench? I think there's a bench, yes. Even amongst, like, lore nerds, <laughs> and even more specifically Final Fantasy lore nerds, there are some some of these conversations just, uh, like, some people hate them. They're like, oh, this isn't lore, it's like meta lore, and it's weird, like, you know, you're trying to... It usually starts with someone coming in with a new argument or, some, or something and saying, hey, like, I know this, this amount of time has passed because according to this and that and that, it's usually very, you know, like, you can tell that that person's thought a lot about that, but, you know, they get, like, estimates of how much time has happened, and then everybody will be like, no, but you can't... I'm, I'm thinking of 14 right now, I should say, and it's really true, you know, like, prologue, but by its very nature, 14 is an MMO that's been ongoing for 10 or 13 years, depending on how you count, right? Um, the characters haven't aged 13 years, and it's extremely obvious that that there is time distortion in the sense that the, the time that's actually passing in game is not the time we experience in real life. Um, but to, oh, wait, hold on, little choco though. I did see you. I'll be with you in a minute, okay? But your big auntie Bella smelled something, and I want to catch that yet. Oh no, she's lost it. All right, fuck it. I'm with you. Um. So yeah, we know that time is wonky in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, and that 
And so, yes, anyway, sorry. Like, some people hate discussing that, and they're just like, all right, it's fiction, it's messed up, suspension of disbelief, you know. There is no interesting points that could possibly be made of trying to think about those things, so let's not discuss it. Um, prologue, in the prologue. I feel like this is one of those things where, you know, I have an issue with the general argument beyond the... In this specific case, I understand that you could make this point. I personally disagree with it, and I'll get back to that in a second, I think. But I also feel like, generally speaking, if your argument is ever, you know, this is an uninteresting point and not worthy of discussion, I don't know. I'm not sure I ever agree with that statement. I think if somebody feels like something is worth discussing, then it is. And if you feel like it's not, it's probably on you. And the example that's coming to mind right now is racism. Like, is it ever worth discussing racism? Like, it's, it's so obviously bad that shouldn't we just dismiss any and all, you know, arguments that have to do with racism? Should we... I've been watching a lot of political um, stuff, talk shows and shit about that because of some stuff that's happening in France right now, but never mind that. But my point is that, you know, there is a point to be made and it's it's being made by a lot of people that share my, my a lot of my values and at the very least, like, political inclinations that, you know, fuck that, we should not be giving so much airtime to um, immigration in France, for instance. It is our politicians and our mainstream journalists' favorite fucking topic of conversation when it is a non... There is no, you know what I'm saying, there, there, there's no issue there, the only issue is the way we treat immigrants, but... It should not be the, the number one thing you ask a politician when you have him on your show. Because there really is no issue. Um, there are, again, there are plenty of issues, but the exact opposite way of the way it's framed. Anyway, the, you know, like, latent racism in so many of those uh, mainstream journalists or modern politicians is just something that... Um, that you could argue, you know, just... No, fuck! Like, let's not even discuss those stupid fucking arguments about uh, immigration and how it has an impact on, on say... Um, sec security, whatever, like, how safe you feel in the streets. Because, like, there are studies that show that it's full bullshit. But, and, and I hear that, and of course it's a fucking shame, and... <coughs> it's a huge part of why France is going to shit politically and everybody's becoming a racist, fascist, is that we discuss those things forever instead of talking about the stuff that actually matters. So I hear the argument. That being said, you know what I'm saying, you can't just... Let's say one of your friends, somebody you really like and you've known forever, uh, kind of, I don't know, gets exposed to some ideas and starts becoming a bit of a racist, or even a total fucking bigot. Should your position as a friend be like, you know, no, there is no room for that, this is not up for discussion, therefore I am not discussing it with you. And so, so what do you do? What do you do? You, you cut ties with your friend and you stop talking to him because he spoke of one of the big, you know, non-interesting things? Um, I don't think so. I think it's a fucking shame, and I think it's also how, yeah, why, you know, the conversations that we have as a society are so off and stupid and petty, and yes, racist. Maybe we should address racism, but properly, not by being, oh my god, I'm sounding like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, throwing shade at the woke movement or, or stuff. That's not what I'm doing, I'm just saying. And this whole, this whole thing started with, is it worth discussing whether the uh, <laughs> the time in uh, Final Fantasy XIV is something we should even think about, or should we just, you know, throw it all in with suspension of disbelief and, and say that it's not a topic worth discussing ever. And yeah, I'd, my point is just, every topic is worth discussing if somebody thinks it's worth discussing. And maybe proving why it's not worth discussing, which... You know, when it comes to racism, that's how easy it should be, like... If we're so fucking sure that we're right, and I am... Why is it so fucking hard to explain to people? I'm sorry, but no. We need to we need to show those people why they're thinking about the whole issue wrong, and show them that we're right. Not refuse to talk with them. Am I even sure about what I'm saying when many of them are like trained politicians that aren't even... ...profoundly racist, they just fucking wanna... I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, um, yeah, I think it's fucking amazing to discuss it, actually. So there's one one um, 
person um, who hangs out in the same community, Discord community as I do for like 14 lore heads essentially. Um, I really like most of his commentary. Um, and he often does, you know, he's totally with me in that, in the, uh, if there's any way to, to, like, frame a logical argument with the elements we have, like, from the game and interview with the, the devs, then yeah, let's do it, and it's fine if we're wrong and they decide against it. Alright, oh, so it's the exact same minigame as last time. Which I totally remember, so that's great. Right, I need to chase them back to where even is the Alright, that's the objective. Motherfucker. And I can only get hit. Mm -hmm. Lure the Moogle into a whirlwind? Oh my god, what the fuck? That's you, isn't it? Oh, and then No! What are you doing? Cloud! Focus! Can I? Yes, I can capture it. No, don't go into the whirlwind. Oh my god! Oh, and they help each other and shit. Come here, you little shit! Alright, this is gonna last three hours, y'all. I'm in no fit state to be capturing fucking Moogles. Can you just. You're so close! Yes! Got you, Mulata! Boom in your face, you little fucking adorable piece of moogly fur. And I got you, Mookie. Let me go already. Go already! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Alright, I'm so fucking good at this game. What's your name? We want Molulu! So you come here, Molulu. Get into that whirlwind. Robins are fun! Oh shit, you almost got me. <laughs> but no, I get No! How did he not get into that? Come on. Yes. I am good though. Alright. Yeah. This is what my brain feels like. <laughs> Running after fucking Moogles and not quite managing to do it and then sometimes I, I do it but like on accident. Yes, yay. Uh, we had one of these, I don't know if you remember, in the first region. And if it looks extremely suspicious to you, like why should I force those little creatures to go back home if they don't want to? Who am I to decide? I'm asked by like one of the Moogles. Uh, they're kids and they're just being unruly but it's all in good fun. Um, so yeah, mini game. So much, See, the Mughal's happy about it. Should we just walk into a community and listen to the first person that tells us like round everybody up and like put them in that building and then do it? No, probably not. But that's what we're doing. It wasn't too bad as far as mini games go, was it, ZA? Welcome, Koopo. Let's see. Interesting. I'm sorry, I'll unlock an M. Um, I am going to buy that. I could actually buy all of them. But it's Aerith and Red, and let's be honest, I don't use them as much as I do the others. I'm gonna be a cheap ass for now. And I wouldn't spend the points I'd get from these on stream anyway, so no point doing it now. Let's go to that tower. Um, I want the right. So each one of those, I feel like there's gonna be one per uh, region, uh, like Mughal Emporium, whatever. So I both earned the right to 
trade Mughal medals with the local Mughal mer merchant, and also his wares are added to the list. So it's not, you know, uh, instantaneous gratification, but like that thing I got is a book that gives Cloud SP, and that is what I use to then improve the weapons. Um, so, you know, teach him synergy skills or all, all of that shit. And I, there was no other way to get that, so yeah, I did win that. And also, it is part of the... Um, why do I that's my leader by default? It is part of the uh, the little missions that uh, Chad has for us. So I have to do them anyway just to 100% everything. And then I get a whole bunch of rewards from Chad though. No, no jokes there. I really fucking love the uh, aerial combat in Rebirth. Again, it's one of those things, like when I was playing Yuffie, I kept saying like, it's extremely satisfying to play. Just the way, you know, I hit buttons and then stuff happens on the screen, but it looks like I pictured it when I hit those specific combination of buttons, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, it's, it's fucking great. Uh, right, so. In 14, we know time is messed up. I still think um, it is interesting to, to consider. And so we do have some hard indications, like at some point in the story, minor, extremely minor spoiler, you know, your character like takes a boat and goes on a long voyage that takes, and it is said, like two months or some, some, something. So we know that at least, at the very least, two months, you know, has happened for those characters in world. Um, and anyway, that guy I was telling you about in that lore community um, did a... Like he actually compiled, compiled every single one of those instances where we know for a fact that canonically, you know, in-world, um, that amount of time has passed. And it's actually pretty hilarious the, uh, like the lower bound he gets on how much time has happened, period. is extremely low and it's... Um, I don't remember, but essentially yeah, the big boat rides are by far the main uh, contributor to it. So you can, you know, you can say that the entirety of Final Fantasy XIV's main story quest uh, up to now took place in less than a year. Um, you can stand upper bound, it doesn't mean that that's the case, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. I think it's interesting, um, as long as you, again, take it with all the uh, necessary precautions. It's just an upper bound, it's just for fun, and it is still at the end of the day fiction that's been created by human beings, therefore they're fallible and there'll be mistakes and shit. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, sure. Still, though, <coughs> I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, in the case of Rebirth, again, I feel like it's even more of a question since I don't feel like so far there's been room for that much, you know, Ellipses, again, if that means anything, and if not, what I mean by that is time has happened for the characters that we have not witnessed. Um, yeah, birdie, I found you. Oh, shit, sure I need better. Alright, but this thing, so, again, that I feel is specifically extremely relevant uh, in the case of video games and Rebirth specifically, it was already a thing, right? Where did the bird go? I feel weird that I have to climb back down when the thing was supposed to be... Did I just like walk right past... Yes, I did. It is the same, sort of. Not exactly, but... With all fiction, I feel like... Again, like... In most movies, there is a clear indication that either you see everything that's happening, or it is clearly 
spelt out for you that a certain amount of time has, has happened. Um, but that's not always the case. Cloud, by analyzing the LifeSpring data, I was able to locate an old Republic transmitter chip. It can be found within a derelict structure that sits upon the coastline. This area is modeled with craters resulting from intense warfare between the Republic and Shinra. Do mind your step as you proceed. Right. I was starting to worry about that whole peninsula that we'd never we never explored. Ah, it's alright, we've got stuff to do there. So much, so much side content. I feel like I could, excuse me, I could almost do all, the, all of this off stream and then just give you guys a quick rundown of um, the, the few bits that are actually lore relevant and whatnot. But I also feel like... Hold on, I think I think I could leave from the other side because at first when I missed it, I almost did and I'll probably get us closer to the um, combat objective. Or not, whatever. Let's just go. Um, yeah, that's that is better. Yeah, when you read, even in in books, uh, fiction at least, I guess. <laughs> if you're reading like historical shit, you have a pretty good grasp on when stuff takes place. But in the case of fiction. Sort of the same thing occurs, right? Like, well, again, talking about what I know very well. In A Song of Ice and Fire, the amount of time that, that passes uh, in between chapters, or even like from the beginning of the story to where we're at right now, is super fucking unclear. And again, like Martin the Hofer himself has gone on record saying, don't try to make too much sense of it, alright? It's, I leave it blurry because I don't want to do timelines, it's not the way I write. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it! And us Morbid fans, what did we do? We worried about it. And we've built, when I say we, have never contributed to this specific project in the fandom, but um, a bunch of great, albeit slightly obsessed people, have made this incredible fucking timeline of, again, like, everything. Um, but down to fucking days, right? And they can, uh, you know, if you've read those books, you know that there's action taking place across several continents and stuff. They've managed, you know, to narrow stuff down uh, we know the day that stuff happens for Danny um, in in comparison to what happens with the main story, uh, you could say. Um, and again, like, you know, you could say, wait, wait, the offer himself told you that that was a fool's errand and to please not do it. Why are you happy that it's still being done? I don't know. I feel like, and it's almost... We're getting to an almost meta... It's getting... You know what I'm saying is that... Is it all that absurd to think that... Oh my god. Shit. <laughs> I love it when that happens, like... When the... Um, time distortion happens because I'm in the menus and I actually see that I'm about to get hit when I had no fucking clue. Not that it helps me get away from it, but you know. So yeah, I think there's something extremely um, attractive about the idea, the notion that one, a human being can write a story and have more happen in that story than he intended. Um, if you know what I'm what I'm saying. I think the argument for any conversation when talking about fiction uh, that goes something like the offer or the offers or the devs or whatever uh, could not possibly have thought of that. Therefore, let's not even consider it because you know it's not what the offer wanted. Uh, I find it extremely limiting and sad in many cases uh, when we talk about Final Fantasy shit, Final Fantasy lore. Yes, yes, there are. St I mean, you know, we have some some examples, some famous examples. Of theories that are that are very widespread in the fandom, um, where the devs, you know, have confirmed like, oh, this is hilarious. 
and you know it makes sense in a weird way but no that was not intended um, I'm thinking let me put my tag up for this one but eight spoilers mute me if you don't want them uh, there's a there's this very big widespread theory that Squall is dead uh, the name of the theory is you know interestingly um, Squall is dead it's the Squall is dead theory Squall being the main character and essentially there's this point in the game where there's this, there's this weird scene where it looks like the main character dies and then he just wakes up and then things kind of get weird and there was this theory but it, there are so many arguments and you know how those things go like people started believing in it so they started looking for clues specifically to prove that and when you look for shit you find it and you know we have this extremely like believable theory that most of Final Fantasy 8 actually takes place in the main character's NDE because he's literally brain dead and the devs you know went on record and were like no 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 no, no that's not what happened he's not dead fun but not true um, does that make you know, does that like nullify all the work and effort and fun that people had for years talking about that? I don't know if it was believable for years before it was confirmed not canon, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still fucking fun! Let people fucking live a little! One, two, one, two. Alright. One, two, one, two. Call me Maestro Zaynan, motherfuckers! Thanks to you, Cloud, I was able to successfully extract data on the deity. That's it? That was... brief. Chat, but okay. Um, right, so this is like the down to earth argument, right? This is the utilitarist, utilitaristic, utilitary shit again. Is that a word in English when you only value something for its utility? Um, it's the, the utilitarian's argument for why you should let people go beyond what the offers, devs, whatever, creators of art initially intended. Because it's fun, and that justifies everything, and what is art if not just, you know, something that makes people happy, and lets them have fun. But beyond that, that's why it gets a little more metaphysical, maybe, um, and I think interesting. Is it all that absurd to think that, you know, again, that the story goes... That as soon as a human being has, you know, set down their art on whatever medium they use, that the art then lives, gets its own life. And more specifically, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of course still thinking of, of fiction here. Um, God, that's smart. Like, I know I'm supposed to hit them when they're, like, getting all nasty, but I always get my ass kicked! Quick cure, Barrett, thank you. I do love when I get to braver a monster while in the air. <laughs> Extremely satisfying. Um, right, so thinking of fiction specifically, but I'm sure you could draw parallels with the uh, plastic arts, is that what you call it? Um, when you write a story about people, regardless of how, you know, Oh shit, thank you so much, DA, you're right. <laughs> you are absolutely the best, DA. Thanks a lot. Um, it was minor too, but yeah. Um, I'm so... I can't wait to stream when I'm back at normal brain capacity. Um, yes. You write about people, you write about characters, right? And um, and I say right, but it doesn't have to be right, but let's say that as an example. You write a story about people, and so those people inhabit you for a while while you're working on that, right? Dangerous fiends may be in the vicinity. Exercise caution. Rare Ignalisk variant identified. 
Commencing guidance protocol. As their size puts them at the lower end of the food chain, they're exceptionally skittish creatures. In addition, they can actively regulate their body temperature, thus allowing them to emit heat as a defense against predators. There are theories that these fiery displays may also be employed in mating rituals. After all, nature is said to be a survival of the fittest. May we too pursue our objective with a passion that burns as bright as the ignalisk scales. All right, my thank you. Uh, let me. Shit, I can't open the menu. Never mind then. A rare Ignilisk variant that has developed the ability to activity actively regulate its body temperature. It runs hotter than normal Ignilisks and can expel heat as a defense mechanism. Exploiting its elemental weakness will pressure it, and while pressured, it will become unable to use some of its abilities. Alright, easy. I've. Oh. God, that's right. I can't check the. Um Who's got ice? I see impulse, yes. Boom! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What the fuck <laughs> is that phrase supposed to mean? Uh, Alright, next tower then. Um, yeah. You write about people and they inhabit you for the duration. At, the, at least that's my. that's how it goes for me. I know it's, it's how it goes for UZA. Um, but even if it doesn't, it's sometimes very obvious that, you know, your characters kind of get a will of their own. Um, which sounds... Wrong character. <laughs> and that's out of MP. Let's get to the tower and then we'll uh, fast travel to rest some more. Um, yeah, so if if you have that kind of uh, relationship to your imaginary characters, and I guess it, it, it it's might be easier for you to imagine what I mean when I say that, you know, characters, that, that your story might grow beyond you. What I'm saying is that even if you don't, even if you're an extremely, even if you're extremely rational or whatever you want to call it, about the way you deal with your fiction, I don't know. Is it that absurd to think that your characters might do things that you hadn't thought they would? Um, and well, I guess you've guessed it, but my personal answer is not at all. And what I'm saying is that you know, if if the uh, a Song of Ice and Fire fandom comes up, fandom comes up with theories that make so much more sense than what Martin himself had intended, you know, what I'm saying is it just coincidence? Is it just like dumb luck, or or is what's going on a bit more freakier than that? A bit more metaphysical 
Where's the... There was a little thingy, right? Some Something flew past us. Where did it go? I don't know. Um, you know, maybe it's because in the very act of writing, of, of bringing them to life, Martin has actually created them, somehow. And I'm not saying that every single time a human being, you know, writes something. Maybe here looks more promising for our way down. Um, actually, I can probably see it from there if there's... Yes. That's the way we want to go, and I think that's about where I tagged it on the map. Um, I'm not saying every time a human being invents a world, that world happens and, you know, becomes real somewhere in the multiverse. I'm not saying I think that's completely ridiculous either, I'm just saying you don't need to go that far to just accept that, you know, creation, human creation, human fiction might be freakier than you think, and... And there might be, yeah, there might be a reason for why even after George R. R. Martin explicitly said, I do not worry about timelines, I hate this shit, please don't worry about timelines. When you try and make a timeline of A Song of Ice and Fire, it works out surprisingly well. Um, better than a politician lying about his timeline of, of things, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should just... I, I don't think it's all coincidence and dumb luck. I think there might be something going on there as well. So. We're wrong about the very nature of reality, y'all. That's, that's, that's the true message here. None of what you think is fiction is fiction. Can you? Yes, you can. Oh shit, I'm gonna die. Barret can toss me in the air, but. Phoenix Draft, I've got a fuckload of these because I craft them. Uh, it, might, it might just be over yet, you know? We're not doing great. Alright, Barret. Don't die. I'm not really sure. What the best way to go forward is. I wanna. Oh my god, there's a fucking attack coming my way. That's alright. Alright. No, don't come. Let me alone! Why don't you kill Cloud again? Fuck! Should I just run away? Probably. Oh god, oh god, alright. How the fuck did I pressure him? Go! Cloud, what are you? The fuck are you doing, Cloud? Kill it! Alright. Oh my god, it's not dead. I am though. I'm so dead. Fuck. That's a game over on totally random mobs. Alright, that's okay. I'm sick. See, it looks like I'm dead, but what actually happened is that through the mysterious will of the characters that we create, this fight had to go this way. It's like the whispers that were making sure that I wasn't gonna make it out alive. Yeah? I blocked that, you piece of shit. Come on, Cloud! Wait, where is that? Yes! Awesome. What the fuck? Those fucking birds are mean. As I guess I would be if I were defending my territory or some shit, but STILL! Oh, hey, Ares! How you doing? Keep it together. Okay, let's go. Hey! No, I... How do I... Alright. I really need to be right beneath them to stay alive, do I? Yes, that sucks. You can say that. 
Come on, come on. Alright! Yes it is, we're almost there, come on. A little faith cloud. Fuck, not again. What? No, oh, motherfucker. Uh, Alright. So fucking close. Oh, backline coming. How do I do that again? Fuck. Shit. I thought it was stronger than this. Yeah, me too, girl. It's alright. We're sick. I could just go rest and then, you know, kick their ass with MP, but that would feel like cheating. How do I. Let me just check the tutorial real quick. You gotta get a good, a good, a good, a good, manual battle. Um, there's a thing where when it goes really shit, um, backline commands. When you're current burn on uh, open the commands menu with X and press triangle to select an ability. Because I feel like Aerith wanted to help out. She was like, You guys okay? I'm sure you are, but if you need help. Punch through. Nice, we pressured it from the get go. Don't let that be for nothing, yo! Well, I'll gouge you first. What the? Why? No! Alright. Launches T fatal one enemy to attack in tandem, use on staggered foes or climb T Valley into the air and deliver a spinning attack. Temporary grants unlimited MP. None of you can't heal, but <laughs> Alright! We did it! We killed two random birds tonight on Morgan Zayden in Life.
All right, where to next? Uh, we're right near the the place where I think we can actually I believe in this one even more. Oh, but first we're gonna go rest, and since we're cheap and we don't want to use a cushion, we're gonna go sleep at our friend Brad's. Sleep, rest on a fucking bench. Well done. The second bird was our kill, no? Um, I think it, it felt like it for sure, but I think it's just, you know, when I started, I, I, <laughs> I spent this whole thing being like, uh, you know, a good offense is the best defense uh, philosophy, and so that works great on the first one that I get down super quick, and then I start losing one of my characters, and then I start, you know, wasting my ATB on like raising cloud, uh, or using potions and stuff, and that's why, you know, my DPS output becomes uh, smaller, because I'm doing more preventive measures to not to not just game over again, and that makes the second one seem harder because it also gets more hits in. If if you know what I'm saying, it's um, you know, it really is the philosophy of like if you if your DPS is good enough, then uh, you don't really need anything else. If you kill it before it kills you, then you win. Um, except that didn't work with the second bird because by the time I get, got the first one down, I was... Anyway, this is deep analysis from my um, adult brain. And yeah, maybe the second one was a bit tougher and there's some kind of, you know, like enemy, individual enemy level role type deal going on. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it was just... Also, I freak out a lot more as the fight goes on. Uh, in terms of, you know... And this is true, not just when I'm sick and adult, but... Generally speaking, in video games. My sensors indicate the presence of a unique life form. Rare Zemzalet variant identified. Commencing guidance protocol. Zemzalets are known as the sages of the skies, not only because of their intelligence, but also their remarkable feathers that make them both elegant and lethal. These feathers have been prized by all manner of craftsmen since antiquity for their beauty and resilience. Arrows fashioned from them are particularly valuable. They're said to slice through the air so quickly, they're capable of piercing even solid stone. Oh, but take care not to be so entranced by their abilities that you lose focus. Alright, thank you, Mai. Uh, oh, and again, I can't, I can't check why I have Tifa as my leader. Um, that's alright. This is Final Fantasy VII Hard Mode. Rebirth. Rebirth, Hard Mode. Uh, Alright, prevent them from taking flight when using Soothing Breeze. Sure. Alright, a rare Zemzelet variant that hatched near a life spring does grinning get arcane power. It can shroud itself in wind to heal its wounds or compress air into powerful bombs. Inflicting enough damage while it's casting Soothing Breeze, breeze will pressure it. Alright, say so when it casts, we go all out. It doesn't like ice. Is that Soothing Breeze? Uh, the fuck, that was thunder. Ain't nothing soothing about thunder! That's actually not true, I find. Under some very soup. All right, now, now, Cloud, get the shit out of it. Yes. Isn't it crazy how just knowing that I have MP, I, you know, get a lot better at the game. Yeah. 
shit. I missed. All right. Oh, did I fail at preventing them from taking flight? Yeah, let's do it again. I thought I thought I was good. Most excellent work, Cloud. Did that battle prove a fitting test of your prowess? <laughs> your dissatisfied mm -hmm. expression says it all. Oh yes, I noticed that as well. You aren't equipped with that functionality. <laughs> anyway. With the data from your latest bout, I created a new virtual combat trial. It will prove a real test. I'm really curious as to where they're going with the whole Chadley slash my thing. I hope it's not just like, oh, robot romance, romance, and that I'm right, and that it's um, it's just Chadley like fucking around. Moving breeze. All right. All right. I just failed. How am I supposed? I didn't pressure it. I did pressure the last one though. Should we just retry or wait for them to get moving breeze again? Which is what that motherfucker was doing. I don't know if you guys could hear, but like, uh, Mai was singing from my controller. I kinda wanna just like fill up my ATB so that when it does its thing I'll just right now! Alright! Hurry up! Life kick! Alright, you go. Fame again. Don't kill it, don't kill it, you guys. Now you're helping Aerith, really? Where even are you? Shit. Is that it? No, that's not it. Maybe they only use it once, one time each, and that's why it, like, the objective is already crossed out? No, alright. Go, 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 go! Shit, well, I should have summoned D4. Hurry up, hurry up, Marine! Yeah, we pressure that. And we killed it! How is killing something not preventing it from taking flight? Yes, but your instructions are unclear! You're in the perfectly, perfectly functional bird, my. All right. I'm gonna try the same strategy once again. Just save all my ATB up for when they um. Oh, actually, wait, it's on the ground. When they do soothing breeze, then go all out. And if that doesn't work, I just leave it for upstream. All right. Oh no. Deal with that. Let me handle the Taking 
Where is the fucking fart now? Jesus Christ. I don't get it. I don't get it, yo. I staggered it! I could kill it before it takes flight, but that's not... Maybe I'm supposed to, like, bind it or some shit? Use a specific... Let me just run away. Oh, can I run away from these fights? I'm not sure. I do feel like I get a second try of the second one. But what I worry about is that maybe I need a specific materia. You know what I'm saying? Like, swimming breeze. All right. Moving breeze. I got Why are you guys always so fucking far? For fuck's sakes. Yeah, just kill the fucking thing. I figured this out off stream. his wings yeah that that sounds like the obvious uh, answer but yeah no, not very vegan is it like we should fight on equal equal terms and then uh, whichever nature has decided should prevail will or something let me just quickly look into um, whether I have any material that might do the trick and if that is not the case, uh, I'll just leave it and do it off stream. And let you guys know how it went next week. Alright, if there is one, I don't have it yet. And if it's something else, I don't get it for now. So, let's leave it at that. Just need to remember that there's one... That's one thing I need to do without you guys here. Alright. Let's go. How do I get there? Looks like Chocobo climbing type deal again. Uh, so yeah, you thought I was done rumbling about <laughs> about do characters do more than their creators intended when they write fiction and all that? You were wrong! Um, I also feel like it's a matter of, I don't know, people get butthurt about this whole thing or even like, you know, I'm sure you've heard that before, like, oh, with your uh, analyzing tests, you know, you're going much further than the offer himself went. What are you even doing? Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, literature studies are bullshit at this when it comes to the classics because we can't get confirmation from the offers. So it might all be completely off the mark. Like that somehow, you know, nullifies the the like the the interest, the beauty, the fucking the point of the whole thing. I don't know. I feel like if I ever produce a work of fiction um, and that people, whether after I'm dead or not, but want to analyze it further than I ever thought it would be analyzed, I don't know. I feel like I'd be flattered, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not a bad thing, is it? So what if we're wrong? Again, leaving aside the fact that I personally don't think it's all that absurd to think that there might be more going on than just you know, the very down-to-earth, literal, um, Cartesian fucking, you know, 
way of seeing things, which is, oh, a human being created this, therefore there is nothing more there than what the human being intended. Um, even without considering that. Even if it is all just fan fiction, let's call it that. <coughs> I don't know, man. I feel like I'd be really happy about people writing fan fiction uh, about my own universe or, or my own writing or whatever the fuck. Um, so why the fuck not do it? I have a good friend. Wait, it does look like I can, like I can climb from there, doesn't it? Let me try again. He's an artist. Marm, you know him even better than I do. And we were talking about this once, about, you know, um... How does he feel about people analyzing his work, and when he hears what they say about it, does he ever feel like, you know... Sure, you guys, but that's not what I had in mind. And I don't remember his exact words, but I, I do believe... My takeaway from that conversation was that he welcomed it. He's like, you know, when I hear people going much further with one of my pieces than I ever did, I'm glad and it makes it even more alive and sometimes they're right and they see things in it that I hadn't seen myself but that were there all along, I just didn't, you know, like consciously and actively put them there. And I think it's beautiful as fuck and strong and great. No. So that's not the way up, hey? Oh shit. It's a long way around. Okay, let's go explore that peninsula, whatever thingy first. Assuming that's the way we get there. Hmm. I'm surprised because I feel like I got all the. Uh... Is that an island? This map, man. Fuck. Alright, let's try. Going there. See if we can get into here. And we'll start from there. Huh. Jesus, it's a real fucking mess. I kind of like the uh, disparity of vessels here, like this is like a sail ship, you know what I'm saying? And this is like an old fucking industrial type shit. Is that old Republic or is there part of just Shinra dumping shit as they move towards a more all different technology? Yes. That also is oddly um, satisfying, just... Oh, you're kidding me, I'm back to the place with the fucking birds? Shit. But they did say, okay, my say that those, say that those motherfuckers were so strong because they grew up next to um, thingy, uh, live stream, you know, something or other, where we go to capture things. One of uh, Chandy's missions. So, surely there's a way to get to somewhere through here, right? Come on, I'm sure you can jump that girl. Believe in yourself. Oh, stairs. I like stairs, we can do stairs. Bird. Wait for me, magical bird! I'm coming! That way? Okay. <laughs> My chocobo is stuck, magical bird. Wait, didn't you say we should climb that? I oh, know, I guess that's not what you said, I'm sorry. Yes, let's red. 
Wait, you can't jump that? Seriously? Come on, Bella. You can do it. Well, I guess not. Okay, it wasn't too bad. I really like the vibe here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen videos, like footage of um, what Chernobyl looks like nowadays. Um, it feels a lot like that. Like, you know, it's just this abandoned city with no human uh, occupation for however many decades now. And, you know, nature has come back. This tree is growing out of buildings and shit. There's deers just running through those streets, but everything's green and beautiful. And there is this sort of, you know, like the plant is scarred for our shitty actions, but it's not dead. Or like Bran would say, <laughs> from yes, oh yay, L'Oreal, my favorite. All right, Junon, the fortress city. <clears throat> Having conquered the Republic of Junon, Shinra constructed a, constructed a nigh impregnable fortress on the coast in the heart of their enemy's former territory. Really interesting. Powered by the world's only underwater macro reactor and equipped with a colossal cannon capable of firing as far as Wutai, the stronghold resembles a vast battleship, risen from the deep to defend the eastern continent. Junon is a city composed of multiple levels, each of which is lined with uniform buildings that were originally designed to serve the needs of military personnel. After the war with Wutai, some were converted into hotels and retail outlets and the harbour and airport now see a constant stream of civilian visitors. Military exercises are still conducted frequently, however, and should the need arise, defense countermeasures can be deployed at a moment's notice, transforming the city into a fortress ready to repel would-be invaders. This is extremely interesting, like, unless I'm reading this wrong, the city of Junon, um, which I was assuming was the capital of you know, the Republic of Junon, the state, um, was built by Shinra after they, they defeated uh, Junon, the Junon Republic. I found that extremely interesting. And it makes me extremely excited for when we actually reach there. Uh, I admit, I did not remember from... I remember some things uh, <laughs> from Junon from back when I played OG. I did not remember the whole, like, it looks like... Uh, let me see it from here, actually. Yes. Is that Junon? Where is Junon? Oh no, it's all the way out there. Um, I didn't remember it, you know, like looking like a battleship because there was a little literal fucking cannon poking out of it. Um, but I like it. This is really... I don't know. I love it. And I'm sure it's me misremembering and that this was all part of OG7 lore. How do you guys think I can get up here? It looks tempting to try and climb up this this uh, a heap of garbage, doesn't it? Maybe we should just swim around and see what gives. That can definitely be climbed on it. Uh. Nice. What you got, baby girl? Here? Mithril ore, nice. Where's the... Isn't this game beautiful, y'all? I just... Love it. Alright. I think we're real close. Are you sure we can't climb that? Yeah. That's my gun. Come on. Okay. Up here. Oh, 
Oh, I guess that works. I don't know, I feel like I'm getting vibes from, um... I don't tell if it's a game or a show or something, but... You know, this mix of... So he can retrieve us himself. I totally forgot to mention that in my previously, but this is important. Um, so, one of the many missions that... <laughs> I read in struggle though. Uh, one of the many missions that Chad um, entrusted us with was finding proto-relics. Um, and after the very first that we retrieved, where this little, you know, teasing like cutscene. It's not so bad. Oh. <laughs> I'm going in, George. How could this be, Captain? Troopers, you're just in time. Come, friends. Let us join forces to lay waste to those fiends and reclaim my treasure! What do you mean, your treasure? It came from our world. It belongs to us. Oh, cease your whinging, man. We've no time for it. Right now, we can but judge! Your mission is to help us break through the enemy lines and retrieve the artifact they stole. With the captain's aggressive approach, I fear we'll surely fail. <laughs> Please. We can't succeed without you. Oh. <laughs> Captain! We're coming! That's our cue. Um, so much to say. Um, Alright. Let's just go and assume everything's fine. I've got all three colors, don't I? We'll be fine! So, we had this like teaser cutscene where we saw a figure and uh, I told you guys I should probably put up my... Uh, how do I... okay He's put out a red so I want blue Best offense is a good defense. Flash. Let me try. I didn't use many healers last. Oh shit! Too late. Way too late for that, Morgan. Uh, right, so I told you guys that this figure I thought was uh, Gilgamesh. Who is one of the very few instances. What a fucker. I don't even know what to use against that motherfucker. I guess a trebuchet is always a good idea. I'm gonna lose this! Red. Come on, ATV. Yes. Shit, I need everything. They're coming! I need red more than I need. Oh, you got I need everything. All right, we've lost this one, I think.
Yes, Steve! Don't clear it, save Tifa! Alright, Tifa's down. We are going down. We are going down! What do we have? We've got every single fucking color attacking us, I don't even know. Come on, Barret! Oh, that's right, I need to summon green units if I want Barret to show up at some point. The Legos are back! Right! Yeah, but the Ligos have actually really interesting fucking lore associated with them. Um, in that, so Gilgamesh is one of the few elements um, of, you know, Final Fantasy as a whole franchise that... Alright, since there's not many of you guys, but ZA's here and she hates minigames. I'm gonna leave that aside for now. Um, what time is it? <laughs> I'm gonna get the other. The world appears to have vanished. If I were to guess, I'd say it's somewhere within that temporal rift. To secure it, I'm afraid you have no choice but to re enter Fort Condor. Yeah, we'll do that, Chad, just not right now. Maybe off stream. But, yeah, I don't like the idea of. Can I fast travel? Please tell me I can. Oh shit. You know what? Never mind. Let's fucking win this! There's nothing we can't do if we don't put our mind to it. Right? Um, so, sorry ZA, I know you hate this. Um, Gilgamesh is one of the few entities that, or even beyond entities, it goes, you know, it's not just entities, it is. Oh, well, it can make it easier, but we're not gonna do that. Okay. Um, what? Why did I choose Tifa and Barrett? Was it sheer uh, they're my favorite characters or was there actual... A range unit able to attack frontline units from the rear. Interesting. His focus shot skill does devastating damage and heals nearby ally units. A quick footed and powerful vanguard unit, her dive kick skill deals devastating damage and applies haste to nearby ally units. A very powerful defense unit with a large amount of HP, perfect on the front lines, is braver skill, does devastating damage, and applies power to nearby all our units. Alright, that all sounds sexy. Let's go with my faves. But then again, I feel like I use a lot of blue units. So let's go with Cloud and Tifa. Alright. Um. Alright, so. What failed us? Uh, we have the cleric anyway, I guess. What's a ballista? A powerful static melee unit that strikes and enemies directly in front of it with piercing blows. Where has the trebuchet? A powerful long range static unit capable of striking a wide but fixed area. This is more like. I guess. You want it more. You know. Against them, you know what I'm saying. So what's the difference here? We've got Vanguard and Elite Vanguard Ranger and Elite Ranger, but only one Enforcer. No, Enforcer and Elite. Oh, in that case we have no static units. In that case we trade the Elite Enforcer for the Trebuchet. In that case we have no base Vanguard. I don't like that one at all. And in that one we have all the fixed things, but not the little guys. Alright, let's try this one. So, Gilgamesh. One of the very few things in, you know, global Final Fantasy lore that actually travels from numbered entry to numbered entry. You say red. I say fuck you. And you say red again. Or you, should, you say big red. I say fuck you again. He's gonna be alright there, right? Maybe I should... Maybe I don't use the clerics enough. 
shit, he's starting to diversify. Come on, ATB, come on, ATB, come on, ATB. This fucking hero up again. Or sir. Nice. What's coming? We've got red. Everything's coming. Do I get cloud if I? Yes. All right. Let's do that, and then just get cloud up in here. Fuck him up, cloud. All right. Let's get a cleric to heal our bro cloud. It's time for a counter fucking attack! We need a vanguard with those idiots. No shit, what did I do? Fuck me. No! God damn it! We're gonna need green as soon as we can! All right, we're kind of attacking on the right while we're getting our ass handed to ourselves on the left. This is the opposite of how I want things to go in real life, but that's all right. Also, I really need... <sighs> nah. I want to pop Sifa as soon as I can, but... I do need... I'm gonna be... Alright, Tifa, I'm gonna put you right smack in the middle of things. Fucks things up, Tifa. Yes! That's my girl! Alright! That's how you play Fort Condor, motherfuckers! And that's when we use the trebuchet. CZA, this is fun! I don't know that I've got anybody that can fight flying units, but. Come on, come on, you guys. No! Uh, flying. Ranger. We got this. We got this. So, Gilgamesh was originally introduced in Final Fantasy V. Captain! We've won! Indeed. Yet we shan't rest till my prize is mine once more. Now, charge! Oh no, you don't! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> oh. What is the meaning of this? Captain! Wait! Don't leave without us! you say so. I'm sorry, ZA. I had fun. Welcome back to reality, everyone. Oh, it seems Excuse you me. returned empty-handed. Sorry, kid. Don't be. I wish I could have done more, but there was so much interference. We're dealing with a powerful energy source. Powerful enough to call current models into question. Hey, Chadley. I think I heard the captain call the proto-relic his treasure or something. You know anything about that? Sadly, no. While I could offer theories, I require more data to speak with confidence. I can, however, inform you of the relic's location. Let's head there next. Oh, Zia is gonna kill me. That's gonna be... It's a little childish, makes such a contrast with the rest of the game. Okay, yes, but that's the thing. So, um, meta, um, <laughs> meta commentary wise, you've noticed that the graphics of this like parallel weird universe thingy um, are a throwback to OG7's graphics, right? You know, being all, um, what do you call it? 
like they you know there's very few polygons used because that's how we used to do 3d um might be how modern engines work but i'm too old to know i should ask my cousin but in any case that's the reason the characters look like they did in og7 and just like they did in ever crisis and you've heard me praise their their work on that where they managed to keep the the feel of those old graphics you know he has nostalgia value um and that's why it looks the way it looks on the meta level but then in world so there is that justification you know i keep i keep rambling about how in my opinion there's good um meta justification for gameplay elements and then there's bad ones and remake so far has been so good at making them good in my opinion where are the rabbits you see rabbits um so, and you know it's like this weird simulated universe thingy that even Chadley's not quite sure what's going on but he's like oh interesting and we know there's you know with the extended uh rebirth lore we already know there's fucking time travel and portals and shit all over the place it, it makes sense that there'd be this weird thing that we get sucked in and shit um now even the so you know uh, oh this here's the crow's nest Base of operations for our anti shinra activities. Sorry, but we're keeping things locked down after the trouble in under Juno. Trouble in under Juno? Um, oh, okay, we can't get any closer. Really interesting. Um, and Lucky Uzi, eh? Guess we can't do these things for now. Let's go check out that one. And then we can move on with the main story. Um,. So, you know, to me this whole thing makes sense. Now, about the the way it's done artistically, or, you know, rather in the... Like, the way it's directed, let's say. With the, you know, like, all the Lego characters, as you call them, are... Um, is overplaying a thing in the, in the acting world in English. You know, well, you're French, so you know what I mean, but... What I mean by that is that, you know, they're like... Everything's exaggerated and stuff in the dialogues and the stuff they say and all that. This is on purpose, I think. It's just to create this kind of like loony universe. Which, and I feel like this is your main reproach with that content. Um, it's a stark contrast to the rest of the game. But it's actually, you know, all Final Fantasies have had... Did one have comic relief? I'm not sure, but... <laughs> From, from two on, it's always been a part of the Final Fantasy experience is that there are very serious games with very serious lore, we talk about very serious, um, we, I say we like I made them, um, you know, very serious societal and, and deep topics are, are broached, but always with this comic relief type of thing, like, you know, did you just, did you just come to, from the stream watching Backseat? Um, you know, you can still breathe, it is still entertaining and stuff. And you know, we can have conversations about that. I think there's room for non-entertaining entertainment, if that makes any sense. If the, the point of it is to show things that are really wrong with our world and shit. Uh, but that's not everything Final Fantasy is, and this comic relief thing has always been a part of the experience. There was always going to be many games. Shit! When 16 came out, one of the great many things that people reproached it was, where are the mini games? Where's the comic relief? It's too serious, it's too grim, it's too grey. You know, it's not a fire fantasy! Um, I strongly disagree with that. I loved 16. I loved the fact that it was so dark and grim. And you definitely would not have seen... Sorry, I said Final Fantasy, I made 16. The, the whole... This whole thing... Um, with... Uh, Fort Condor and the little blokey characters and the over-the-top acting and stuff That would not have happened in 16. I still think 16 was a great game. I think again like you know You can now transmit a manifestation of the planet's favor If you don't mind, I'm gonna check this out real quick because I think it might be Planet's blessing and sage. Yes, thank God. Uh, you know, I started running into the issue of having too many materials and I couldn't, like, carry anymore. Well, that's fixed with that. 
let me just craft everything I can that gives me XP while we're in here. And then I'll, you know, go through actually checking which one will I keep and shit off stream because it's not the most interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, it makes sense to make a game where you really stay serious all the time and there's no room for this little, like, fun side content. I don't remember mini games in 11. That's an excellent point. There are there were close to no mini games in 11. There were some though. Um, one that comes to mind is the um, during the summer events. There was the thing. It has a name when you try to catch fish, but with just like a little, you know, pan-shaped object thing. Actually, I gifted you well your character a kimono one year. I didn't actually do the. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, the mini game to get it, but you know you had like a, a purple kimono. Um, I just bought it for you, but originally it was from that mini game. But you're very right that 11, much like 16, was one of those. Um, there wasn't much comic relief in 11, honestly. There was those three tarus in Chains of Promacia and stuff, but it is definitely you know if you compare it to a seven, whether OG or what they're going for, what they're going with here. Uh, 11 was extremely serious and, and grim and, you know, um, in French we call it first degree, uh, and that, you know, it's like, there's no, you know what I'm saying, like, it's, it's extremely serious, no, no jokes, no times for jokes type thing, and again, I think you can make a, I, 11 is probably my favorite FF of all, uh, so it can be great, and I'm a big defender of 16 and stuff, I'm just saying, that's not what 7 is. That's not what OG7 was. And in keeping true to OG7, that was this, you know, I, I've, I've spoken about this a lot on stream too, like, um, I keep hitting the wrong button, sorry. Um, 7 is very weird in a fun way. And yeah, they've kept that. They've kept that. And there were a lot, loads of mini games in 7. Not as many as what we're getting in Rebirth. Um, but they're keeping true to the, you know, the spirit of the original game. Um, and I think that's great. Both work for me, honestly, as long as it's done well. And, you know, to keep on with... I know I know you're not a fan of 14, um, and much like me, 11. Hey, Krieger! Welcome, my friends! How are you, bro? We You haven't missed much because I've been doing... Um, you know, side side quests and exploring and stuff, so you haven't missed anything in the uh, MSQ, let's say. I'm awake! How's, uh, was it a rough day? You make it sound like it was a rough day. Oh, Krieger's drunk! Now it's a body! Nice! Where were you? What were you getting up to? Who were you drinking with? Because it definitely wasn't me! Alright, I don't know how I can reach that point there. Uh, well, Kriya, you're just in time because I believe... Oh, right, no, we have that side quest that's gonna get us real close to Junon. But if you all don't mind, I just wanna really quickly explore this place here, see if we get any caches or, um, or such, and then we'll go do the side content that will bring us right to Junon and moving on with the side story. Um, But yeah, so, I totally get, you know, where you're coming from, from ZA. Um, and you know, also in, in fiction, like, I feel we have almost identical taste. With all the firemen for the end of the exam. F fuck, shit! Is it over? Like, are you done with all the exam shit for now? In if so, then congratulations! How did you do? Are you happy with... I know, I know you anyway, I'm sure you've done super well and you're gonna get like the best grades and everything and then be promoted to Vice President of France or some shit, but... Great! I'm so glad for you, man. I'm so happy for you. Congrats for getting through with it all. And again, I'm sure you, you're, you, you've done it ridiculously well, like always, but... Okay. <laughs> 
I knew I should heal up. Let's heal up. Barrett's got all his MP. Yeah, so we were just talking. ZA was. We, we've just played around the fourth Condor, and ZA was saying that she doesn't like it. She doesn't think it's fun. And she thinks that it's uh, not your words, ZA. But if you don't mind me rephrasing it, essentially, I feel like what you're saying is that it, it hurts your immersion uh, to have those like silly mini games and a completely different tone in the acting and stuff and I think I think I yeah I'm just saying you know again your 11 is your go-to FF mine too but it is not necessarily representative of every FF and usually this whole loony part of it is a big part of the game and 7 in particular was notorious for that so it's just in keeping with the thing and then there's the whole Gilgamesh thing that I will um, talk more about in a second What's happened in Rebirth? Well, not much, Krieger, honestly. I've been doing side content, you know me. We've just been exploring um, Junon a lot. Is there anything vaguely... Yeah, one interesting thing uh, that... <laughs> a lot of minigames happen. See, like, ZA is, is mad at me for doing too many minigames. Um, you know you know that uh, Rishenf and Numax fucking love it when I do minigames? But of course they won't hear tonight when it was all mini games. That's just my luck. <laughs> but yeah, um, one interesting thing. Well, it's a, it's a small detail, but I know you're into that shit too. So one thing we learned is that you know Junon, the city that we're going to go to very soon. What time is it? Maybe not tonight, but definitely next week. Um, Junon, the city was actually built by Shinra, not the Republic of Junon, after Shinra won the war. And that's why it looks like a <coughs> like a fucking tank, you know, poking out of the cliff. Is that it's actually a the city itself is like a military complex that has a cannon strong enough to fire exactly with the big cannon uh, that you can fire all the way to Wutai uh, from with that biggest cannon in Junon. And Z died and was very happy that you were there, not there to see it. I have no idea, no idea what you're talking about. Nobody died here. Um, thank you, ZA. I am extremely sick. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, Krieger, but uh, I am not at my best. So, you know. And I did win four Condor. It was it was not as easy as in the DLC, and I won it on the second try, which isn't too bad, is it? And so, in keeping with our conversation about mini games and this kind of like loony aspect of some Final Fantasy VII in particular, Gilgamesh uh, again is a character that originated in V, but is one of the very few examples of things that are absolutely, you know, canonically um, he appears in several different Final Fantasy games. The, I mean, I'm not saying a Gilgamesh. Actually, ZA, since you're a big uh, 11 girl, I don't know if you remember Gilgamesh from 11, but he's one of the instances where Gilgamesh we see is not the Gilgamesh from 5. Or is he? Um, I'll talk about that more someday, uh, about the Gilgamesh from 11, because it is particularly interesting. But again, 11 kind of stands out. It is not... Ooh. Why is it orange? Have we had that before? We've had that before, but I don't remember what it means. Um, but yeah, in, most of the times when you see Gilgamesh, it is the actual character from Final Fantasy V. And in Final Fantasy V, so there's a reason in world for why... Oh, nice, it's the reason we were here for. Good, I thought you remember that. Um, I can't look at the map if I'm on top of, of my chocobo. Alright, sure. Um... I think Gilgamesh isn't in OG. I think you're right, Krieger. Um, it's been a lot... Well, you remember it a lot better than I do. 
It's been a while for me, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's new. If he was, it was not in that way, right? With the connection to Fort Condor, which is weird and, and I think it's hilarious, but... Again, I totally understand where ZA is coming from with the... You know, like... It feels so out of place compared to the rest of the game. Here, maybe? I wish I could just, like, put a little hand drawn map in front of the real map, but never mind that, let's try that. Um, so yeah, I think it's an addition, uh, like they brought him in with, nice, uh, with Rebirth. I personally, I love, I love that shit, I love Gilgamesh, I love, you know, inter Final Fantasy lore, so yeah, I'm always happy when I see him, I think it's a great idea, and I kind of like the way it's done, and so, I think it's more than a, a wink, I think it's more than an easter egg, I think it's a proper, you know, just like in 8, he was kind of not a huge deal, right, like his presence in 8 did not change the course of the story, but the way they did it was definitely impactful, right, like, it's not just, you know, like you say, uh, on like, uh, it was not just an easter egg, like, it was an actual part of the, I mean, yeah, it was... I can totally look at my notes while on the chocobo. Alright, so the last one... What am I doing? The last one, I think, is right on the way to Junon. So that's great. Um, but yeah, what I'm saying is that sometimes Gilgamesh appears in Final Fantasies that are not 5. And he's an actual... You know, like... His appearance matters, it's not just for shits and giggles. Is what I'm saying. And I feel like what they're doing here with the whole minigame thing... Uh, is that, is that they're setting him up to make him, you know, not super important. We're not gonna see Gilgamesh, like, join soldier and become a soldier first class. Uh, but, you know, like, he, there's this whole thing, like, he's looking for the relic, we're gonna see him again and again. At least that's my feeling, right? Um, they're setting it up to be a recurring thing, and uh, I love it, I love it. And, again, to kind of like finish this whole, whole stream of consciousness thing that I've been uh, ranting about. Um, ZA, you know, he's just taking his usual... Um, so again, not always. In 8, it was not comical at all when you appeared, but in 5, he was the comic relief, while also being a very serious and lore important character, but he definitely was maybe the main, you know, comic relief aspect of 5, I would say, is fair to say. Um, it is the same in 14, uh, where he's very, I wouldn't say important. He's in uh, the uh, Hildebrandt uh, questline figure. Well, you've 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 been far enough. You've you've seen him in 14, but in 14 he really is comic relief, right? Like, he's, he's just this silly big dude. It's hilarious every and and the like the questline he appears in is very much the comic relief questline of 14. But still, you know, like he's a recurring character in the questline that is whatever some people might think about it, extremely fucking important. The last fucking relic questline was part of that, you know, comical uh, questline. Um, and we got some serious lore from it too. It answered some of the questions, outstanding questions that I had personally and that many people in, um, again, the, that this lore community that I keep talking about had. Dude, spoilers! But yes, I'm gonna fucking... Delete that message. Why do I have to moderate my moderators? Who watches the watchers? Um, yes, that was quite the twist, wasn't it? And uh, actually, no worries, no worries. Again, like, I know ZA hates uh, 14, so I doubt she'll ever play it. I would be very surprised if Marm ever plays it, and I know, so you're totally fine. Um, oh, yeah. D don't worry about it, Kriga. It was more it was more for the joke, just the pleasure of uh, deleting one of your messages uh, rather than, than it actually mattering. But yeah, um, that twist was fun. And the implications, again, for... No, no, are you kidding? Everybody does not know that uh, in 14. It's in the Stormblood... Uh, oh, there's a reunion guy here. It's in the Stormblood Hildebrand quests. If I'm not mistaken, and I am not mistaken, uh, because 
the other character that you mentioned is introduced in Stormblood in his um, 14 version. So you actually need to go through all of the Hildebrand quest line, all of the um, Heaven Squad quest line, far enough in the Stormblood quest line to have that reveal. And of course, that means that you've gone as far as the Stormblood MSQ. Um, so there are there, there's a great great many Final Fantasy XIV players who do not know about that. Honestly, it's not that early. What I'm saying is that it, you know, it's a twist. It's a fun twist. It's not going to ruin your immersion to know it, but it happens very late. Twelve, thirteen, and fifteen. So um, twelve, I don't know. As you know, it's one of the very few that I haven't personally finished. Um, wait, I've been there all... Yes, this is the wrong direction. You want to go more like there? Um, 12 I don't know about. In 13, he actually appears, not in 13 per se, but in 13 too. Um, and it's just, it's like a fighting... Uh, it's like a fighting DLC. Uh, I think it was a DLC, it might not be, or part of uh, a DLC, so there's not much lore, but it makes sense with the uh, Gilgamesh character, you know, it's like traveling from universe to universe trying to find new weapons and great fighters to uh, try his uh, might against, right? Um, so he is in 13, and then in 15, interestingly, just like in with 11, they went with the... Um, there is a Gilgamesh, but that is not, or at the very least, not obviously the uh, inter-franchise, intra-franchise Gilgamesh. All right, y'all, help me out with this. We want to go to the bottom of the big weird thing. And there's obviously a, you know, like a way to get through. That looks a lot like where I'm at, doesn't it? And not Junon, which is over there. So, I think we're close. I think we're real close. I just need to find the exact way. Um, you didn't play the DLC. Yes, but that's what I'm here for, to fill in the gaps for you. Um, in the... So, in 15, again, it's a DLC. It is the Gladio DLC, I'll just say that. And, much like the 11 Gilgamesh that uh, I was, I was uh, discussing with ZA earlier, um, he's not, or if he is the Gilgamesh we know from 5, it's not obvious at all. And it seems to predate the whole thing. I'm so confused. Alright, let's look at the map and the proportions. And then let's look at the duel. No, Chocobo, sorry, wrong button. What am I doing? I want to see my map! Okay. Also, the two first ones were fairly close by, and the third one is supposed to be like equidistant or just a tiny bit further. And we have first point, second point. Yeah, I'm not in the right place, am I? Probably more somewhere like there. Um, so, yeah. Gilgamesh does tend to be. You know, either DLC with modern games or side content, uh, and yeah, I think it's too early to tell. We've only seen him three times now, um, twice in relation to the mini game, and it could just be that, right? It's like a mini game cameo, like recurring cameo type shit. I'd be happy with that too. I, I'm just saying that even if it is that, you know, they have already set it up to be more important than just like in 13:2. It was like he shows up, you beat his ass up. You know, the end. There's no... no. Whereas now, you know, he's interacting with us, he's a recurring character. Um, and there's a lot of the... Again, the way the comic, specific comic relief around him is... is um, you know, done. Uh, I feel, feels very reminiscent of Gilgamesh from 5. And, uh, and you know what? Here's me criticizing 14. Again, I can criticize Final Fantasy. I am actually... And again, I love this shit. I love seeing Gilgamesh in different Final Fantasy games. I'm very glad that he's in 14, that he's a recurring character in 14, that he seems, you know, it looks like he's uh, not quite done uh, just fooling around with us in 14. And I'm very glad for that. That being said, um, I think it could have been handled better. 
and in particular like his lines in 14 are the exact same as in 5 which 14 does a lot of that it's a sandbox mmorpg it's supposed to be full of nostalgia and references to to final fantasies and all that you know i'm cool with that but i also want things again you know it's my eternal thing of just because some things are done, you know, for meta reasons uh, by the humans actually working on the fiction doesn't mean they shouldn't go out of their way to try and make it make sense in world. I'm still struggling to find, you know, a reason, a reason, like a justification for Gilgamesh in 14 saying the exact same thing he said to the gang in 5. And I'm just, I mean, <coughs> again, like everything, if you want to do enough, you know, we can f find fictional way around that. Like, oh, he misses Bartz, the main character from Five uh, and his other friends, so much that he's kind of like, maybe he's gone a little crazy after all the time travel, and so he's like, you know, reenacting the exact same fight with those strangers he's just met in a strange world. Sure, why not? But you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, okay, here's this character, here's the essence of the character, let's put him in another world, in another game, and then use our understanding of the character to, you know, make it work. It's just like, let's copy and paste what worked for this character. Which I just feel is, you know, lower effort. Again, God knows I love CBU3 and, and, and I'm a fanboy, but... It's lower effort than what we're seeing so far. With Gilgamesh in Fort Condor, this silliness. I just, I love it. Alright. When right. Special delivery. Mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Anyway, name's Freddy. So what was it you needed again? Let's ask about Gabe. I do love that Gabe thing. And I, we go way back. Comrades in arms. You'd never know it now, but he used to ride front and center in the Chocobo Cavalry. We scoured every inch of these mountains. Hunting for Shinra units, and attacking them when they least expected it. <laughs> Some close calls, too. Don't know how we survived. We fought tooth and nail for ourselves and the Republic. But... wasn't enough. Now I'm just hoping to live out the rest of my days in peace. Nice. This is what I'd been waiting for, you guys. I don't know if you remember, but last week I was rumbling on about how... There was still... it wasn't entirely clear. We had several clues, but, you know... Now we have hard confirmation that Shinra conquering, like fighting the war, like the war was in living memory. How old is, is uh, Freddy? 50 tops? It's kind of like what we had with Broden, but it was less clear. Now we know that the war happened, you know, he was, he, he fought, so he was at least 13, right? So we have a, an upper bound, let's say 40 years, be generous, 40 years ago is when Shinra conquered Junon. Does that mean Midgar, the Shinra version of it, happened 40 years ago? Could be older, again, could have been a city-state in the middle of the Junon Republic and then it escalated into war and that took a few decades, but we're getting, we're getting closer to a coherent timeline there and I fucking love that. <laughs> Frankly, I'm not doing much of anything. Other than thinking about the war, that is. This used to be a shelter, you know. One of the few safe spots during the air raids. A lot of folks lost their lives. Good, decent folks. Can't bring back the dead, but least I can do is sit here and pay them my respects. That's more about the war. Versus Shinra, before your time. You didn't think all those buildings demolished themselves, did you? Anyway, I fought in the Republic Army. And let's just say it wasn't pretty got our asses handed to us and what you see now is all that remains oh yeah <laughs> you did mention that this will just take a sec tell me she ain't a beauty nobody makes them like I do and that's no lie go on take it you ought to make more than that. Gabe's definitely gonna need him at some point. I don't know about that. Besides, I've got things to do. <sighs> like catching some seeds, for one. 
So if we're all done here... I'm a Z you're not gonna catch. <laughs> Best be on your way if you don't need to hassle me for anything else. This besides, Gabe's waiting. Best be on your way if you don't need to hassle me for anything That's else. nice. Alright, we got a bunch of uh, Junon vs Shinra lore. I'm very happy about that. And... Aerith. That was sweet of her. Uh, some might say a bit... What do you call it? Misplaced um, goodwill, if that makes any sense. Like, just leave the poor man alone. You know, it was so obvious that she was trying to get him to find a reason to to get up for. Uh, but I think it came from the right place. Like, she's a good person, and, and I like that. Thank you, Aerith. Um, before I finish with Gabe, if you will allow me, we've only got 34 minutes left. Just want to repeat the uh, announcements real quick. We will have two. Also, I can call it on next Tuesday. We're playing OG7. We're getting back to OG7. Um, so yay, fun! Um, we're gonna do two special sessions on Sundays. One for the house building in 14. One for the 16x14 crossover event. Uh, can't tell you when those will be precisely. The second one, I'm I'm just waiting for CBU free to release the crossover event, and then we'll schedule it. The first one, I want to make sure that. It's the right Sunday. This one was not the right Sunday, for instance. Uh, but we'll do that very soon on stream. Um, and... I'm thinking... I want to finish all the quests near Junon before continuing the story. Exactly, Krieger, but I'm almost done. This is literally the last one I can do. Because this... All this side content is locked for now. Uh, it's those guys, those resistant... Resistance guys against Shinra that won't let me pass through for now. Nice, yes! Uh, I'm excited too, uh, thank you for saying that, Krieger. Um, oh, it's gonna be fun! So we're back to OG next Tuesday. Um, and then, uh, yeah, before you go, because it's pretty late, uh, I'm thinking of moving my Tuesday stream to either Monday or Sunday, but earlier. Thank you, uh, thank you, ZA. That's exactly what I wanted to to bring up. Um, so Krieger, we've discussed this. ZA agrees with you um, that my first day slot is too late, but I can't make it. I can't move it to earlier because of back seats. So the solution is to move it to another day, and that has to be either Sunday or Monday. Uh, but then we'd be, you know, we'd be doing either Monday and Tuesdays or Sundays and Tuesdays, and kind of same same as Tuesdays. So like. 9 p.m. to half past midnight friends time um, yeah don't I mean DM me if you have feelings about this I will ask some of you guys um, off stream to to get your feedback and then we'll do it um, as for your questions yeah I think it's not incompatible with the two events actually I'm more picturing it like a special afternoon stream when I do the two events if that makes any sense so we could uh, also we can we can use up a slot um, you know, if I if we if we schedule my my normal uh, bi-weekly stream to Sundays, it's fine if we take up one Sunday to do um, fourteen shit instead of seven. Um, so you know, it doesn't. We don't even have to wait for those two things to have happened before we change the schedule. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have thoughts on that, and I will also ask some of you uh, in private to make sure that I make the right call. Oh yeah, I've promised you, especially, especially you, uh, uh, what we mean by events, Krieger, are the 16-14 uh, crossover that's gonna happen anytime now. They said early April. No, no, in, uh, in Final Fantasy XIV. So nothing to do with the main thing we do on stream. It'll just be me playing XIV. Um, I do think it's it makes sense to stream the event because like it's a crossover between two Final Fantasies. I talk about 16 and 14 all the time and shit. Also, some people, Numa uh, specifically, have asked me to stream 14 more. And the so that's the first one event, the 16 crossover. I think it makes a lot of sense to do it together. And the se also for recent fan you, for instance, that are unsubbed for now. I mean, I don't know. I know you haven't played 16, but I think. I don't know, well, you tell me. I feel like it would be interesting for you guys to see the event, um, you know, maybe years before you can experience it for yourself. Um, so I definitely want to do that. The second one is building Aerith's home in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, 
it's not a real event, it's an event in my life. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about it. But you know, we'll do that on stream as well. Um, but yeah, those things, we can move the, the schedule before we actually do those things is, uh, is all I wanted to say. Uh, but again, yeah, let, you guys let me know if you think it's a terrible idea or if you think it's a good idea and if, it, if that's the case, if you have a preference between Monday or Sunday. Um, and we will, you know, we'll make the call very soon and change the schedule finally and stream earlier like you guys have been saying since the beginning. Again, I've never said you were wrong. I'm j you know, remember, when you guys told me that uh, my slot on Thursdays was too late, what I said was, I'm not ready to move the schedule just yet. I want to make sure before I do it. Uh, but I always knew you were right. And you know, I feel like now's the time. This is this this project is mature enough to do the change. Anyway, happening very soon. Um, let's see what's up with Gabe. Guess what? Brought you a present from your good friend Freddy. Is that so? Only if you promise to fix your carriage and take better care of your chocobos. Well, twist my arm, why don't you? All right, little lady. It's a deal. Good. In that case, no time like the present. Whew. Good as new. Oh, oh, I gotta say, that old dog really outdid himself this time. Hell of a job. Don't think my carrot has ever looked even half this good. Appreciate it, kids. I can finally get the business back up and running again. That's great. But before we head out, I just want to ask one more thing. If we hadn't shown up, would you have even tried to give your birds a better life? Maybe. I see. But I get it. Shinra's a big company, and what they say goes. I can't blame you for being too scared to fight back. Hey! I ain't scared of those sons of bitches. Not one bit. Oh? Then why'd you shut down the business? It's like I told you, my carriage broke. And getting the parts to fix it sounded like a real hassle, so... So, there you have it. I just... let it go. How responsible. Okay, fine. I shouldn't have been so quick to throw in the towel. You happy? Starting today? I'm giving this job my all. I'll stock up on parts so I can keep the carriage moving and make sure my birds never get bored again. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> then the deal is sealed. You're quite the businesswoman yourself, ain't she? Traveling by Chocobo Carriage. Know that Gabe is back in business. You can travel between the Junon region and the grasslands without entering the mines. Speak with the stable hands at either Gabe's or Bill's to use the service. More tattoos than you, Z. Yeah, for now. For now, ZA. He's older than I am, too. I, I do hope I'll be. I'll have more than him by the time I'm his age, if I ever make it this far. Uh, and yeah, 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 Kiga, I know, I know. Um, I, I know, bro. And, and I knew, for instance, that you would not have a strong opinion on uh, Monday versus Sunday. Actually, no, I was wondering about that, too, because, like, I know some people are weird about Sundays and weekends in general. Like, they'd rather not have anything, regardless of whether it is, you know, even if it's a thing where it's like, if you can if you can go, then you go and it's fine. And if not, it's fine, you know what I'm saying? Is that they'd rather not have a uh, thing on Sundays, even if it's totally optional. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I just I just wanted to bring it up. Um, yes, yeah. Like ZA says, you're the absolute best. But I say it a lot, um, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. I hope I say it enough, Kiga. But I love it so much that, that you know you've been helping me out so much and shit. Probably ought to drop by Freddy's place yes, at some point. Yes, do that, too. Gabe. You could use a company. Don't want to ruffle that bird's feathers any more than I already have. All right. Um. Well, let's go, shall we? We do have almost half an hour. I think we can get a tiny bit of cutscenes in. And this is exciting! Finally, we're going to Junon, the Cannon City. 
Is this the best place to go? No, probably. Yeah, when you finally decide to, uh, I don't know. I don't actually know, but... I was gonna say to run for um, office and like do politics when you're done with your fireman career. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, I I'll be I'll be there, and also if you ever need anything, but I hope you know that I I I will do anything in my power to help you out. Obviously, obviously. Yes, yeah, I know. Um, and again, like those of you guys that have been following me, um, I mean it's a recurring thing, right? This hour works great for me, but not for you guys. Uh, and so yeah, we're, we're again, you know, the decision to move it to earlier an earlier time slot um, is absolutely set in stone in my mind for now. Um, so now the question is just do we want Sundays or Mondays? Um, and I'll just you know just gathering a bit of input. And then if it's all the same to everyone, uh, I'm honestly not sure which way I'd, 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 I'd go, but yeah. It'll happen soon, I promise. No more... Well, yes, there will be more streaming uh, super late nights. Like when, we, when I start going into marathon mode for down trail to prep for my wall first! Which again, like it's, it's, it's right around the corner, it's actually gonna happen fairly soon. Uh, and in that case, you know, I'll feel free to stream even all the way to 6 in the morning and shit. But it won't be the same, right? Like, I do absolutely expect to be... Um, I don't expect you guys <laughs> to show up and shit. I'll, I'll just be streaming uh, kind of like all the time. So all of this is Junon? Everything above us. Below is under Junon. Little more than an impoverished fishing village. <laughs> Figures. Shinra's always gotta have someone to stop on. It's their friggin' M.O. Yeah, I know it's best for both of you guys. Um, again, and I hope you guys understand why I picked the, um, the hours I did to get started. Um, it made sense, it made sense at the time, right? It's one of those things. Yes, you do, man. Go to bed. Thank you so much for stopping by, Krieger. Uh, I hope we won't move too far with the main story, but yeah, we've only got 20 minutes to go, so I'll, I'll let you know everything that you missed tonight. Thank you so much for coming, as always. Good night. Good night, man. Uh, my love to your family, and uh, see you very soon. And thanks again for everything. Hey guys. No civilians allowed. Really? I can't let you through. Head to under Junon if you're looking for an inn. I can't let you through. Under Junon's further down, on the coast. But did they let um Where are the reunion guys? Where's my people? Surely they won't allow in either, right? <laughs> Good night, Krieger. Don't eat too much radishes. I swear to God, every time I see radishes now, I think of you, man. I'm very happy if I made your uh, commu commute a little happier. That makes me happier than uh, than I can say. Good night, man. Sweet dreams. I feel like the entrance should be nearby, but they did say further down the coast. Let's just follow the coast. All right, let's listen to these Shinra motherfuckers. Here maybe? No, that's the uh, Hermit's place. That's for 
Ender Dreamen. This all leads to the checkpoint, doesn't it? Join the fight! Keep our world safe! Shinra, now recruiting. Oh, this is it. Alright, it's literally where we were when they were talking about Under Junon. Which makes sense, Mark. Coming in hot with the chocobos and fucking everything up on the way. It's kind of funny how this whole, um, you know, like Midgar with the plate and the under city, like the slums and then the plate side and stuff, is actually a recurring thing in, in 7. It's, it does not, and you know, Barret just made reference to that, like, oh yeah, if Shinra can step on anyone, of course they would. Uh, but it is a, you know, it's a single occurrence. One moment. <laughs> Welcome to Under Junon, our sunless oasis. My name is Rhonda. I'm the mayor and sheriff around these parts. turn you in and be a hundred grand richer for it <laughs> well you know what they say can't take it with you <laughs> oh shit Barrett. Hmm. Hmm. and Aerith to boot huh that's another half a million on top <laughs> half a million <laughs> down here though we know when to turn a blind eye. Consider our lips sealed. Sorry, but I call bullshit. Well, I don't think you would, if you knew even half of what my town's been through. You don't like it? Leave. But, over there, there's a quiet little inn, where everyone's welcome. Any guys in black robes pass through? Not that I saw. Did see some black suits though. Uh -oh. Two guys and a girl. Looked pretty tough. Well, well. They made a beeline right for the elevator. Now we're talking. No, don't even think about it. In case it isn't obvious, upstairs is Shinra turf, and the same goes for the elevator as well. <laughs> oh shit! Don't ask me what. But the company's got something big planned up there, and security is tight. You start anything? Anything at all? And there will be consequences. She should wash her t-shirt. ZA, you're so mean. Like, she's mayor and sheriff, and also she greets every single visitor. And also her heart's in the right place and she hates Shinra. She ain't got time to wash her fucking t-shirt. Behave yourselves now. I like Rhonda. You'll be safe here. Relax. Hey, you can trust me. Cross my heart. Behave yourselves now. Also, one thing I didn't say, because we were talking about other things. Um, well, we'll get back there and I'll say it again next stream, but... The uh, Crow's Nest, that place of Shinra resistance that did not let me in. The Crow's Nest is a Final Fantasy XV... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Kriya said it before, easter egg, uh, not easter egg, but like reference, reference. Um, the crow's nest was a... What she said. There's gotta be black robes around here somewhere, so how are we gonna find them? That would depend on where they are headed. If they mean to continue west, there are only two ways off this continent. By sea, or by air. Right. Might want to ask around town then. Locals will know routes not on the map. May have even seen stragglers pass through. 
or got boats for rent or something. How about we meet at the inn when we're done? Sounds good. And remember, low profile. Oh, did you see that? The eight new Queen's Blood players await your challenge in Ender June. And, um, more reason to be presentable. Hard disagree on this one, but we've spoken about this before. This is your mom's argument for uh, left-wing Congress people in France not looking, you know, presentable because they're not wearing suits. Fuck that. What you what you do is more important than the way you look. Houses in the sea air, pink chipping and wood bending. Time moving on. And the light here, the way it bounces off the ocean below and the metal above, a pastiche of contrasts, the stark steel beams, the weather beaten homes, the drying fish. Oh, you are mean? Nah, well, you know, I put in tree girl. You know where I got it from, but you know what I mean, though. You know what I mean. All right, Snaps, what you got for me? Oh, made your way out here, huh? Mind if I get a shot of you? I've got the perfect backdrop. Look at him posing. And his friends aren't even there, like... <laughs> Under Junon's a fascinating little town. Their water is especially so. I mean, the color. This beauty comes at a dangerously high price, though. It's worth documenting before it's gone. Anyway, if you know any other camera-worthy subjects... Yep, can't access that just yet, snaps, but I'll get there, promise. No, I don't have it. Oh, did I never show him the picture from the grasslands? Getting the exposure correct down here can be a bit Yeah, no, I did. I truly appreciate it. As always, I'd welcome tips about other promising spots. Brittle houses in the sea. Yeah, you've said that. Who even are you talking about, you weirdo? She's such a special girl. Oh, Priscilla! We're gonna meet Priscilla! If you watched my little um, teaser thingy on YouTube for the Rebirth launch, um, I heard about Priscilla in uh, like in the Collector's Edition, I got a little art book and Priscilla was in there and I was like, who the fuck is Priscilla? Uh, if she was an OG, I do not remember her. I'm gonna do that off stream. Capital, a floating city built atop a fleet of interconnected ships. Mm. Very nice. Now that once proud metropolis is mere flotsam, courtesy of Shinra. In its place, the company built a new, unsinkable city of steel to stand as a warning to any who might dare to oppose them. Or so I was taught. He does know everything. Uh, I think this might be a minor spoiler. I think he's like super old. Uh, he's been in Oja's lab forever, but you know, he's all boys been around, so he knows shit. Many years ago, this stretch of also really interesting. You know, I was wondering earlier about how like the uh, city called Junon was a Shinra, um, Shinra thing. Like it was established by Shinra, while the Republic itself shared the same name. Well, there we have. We have our answer. There was a Junon in this exact spot, it's just that Shinra came and ruined everything and built something on top of it. Exactly like Midgar. Remember in Remake, we got confirmation from um, Jesse that uh, Midgar was... There was a settlement in Midgar before Shinra showed up. Just, you know, it was different. Uh, where's the players? Just... <laughs> well, he at least he's serious. Like he's holding true to his promise, right? He's doing the. I see that you've made your way to. This town is quite reminiscent of the Mega mm -hmm. City, isn't it? The severe lack of sunlight being one similarity. I was just telling our people about that, Chad. By the way, Cloud. Great minds. By the way. Have you made any progress lately in the hunt for that proto-relic I mentioned before? If not, don't worry. 
I'm sure you have more pressing matters to attend to. Anyway, just checking in. He's so fucking passive aggressive, that kid. You are the worst person to do research with, kid. And I've worked with some, you know, hard to work with people Sometimes doing academia. So, fuck you, Chad. Oh my gosh! Actual oh, you're adorable, but no discounts. Do you have like a binding material? I'd buy that. Weird and wicked. Oh, I want. I do want all cards, actually. Yes. Buy something? Yes, yeah. I do, ma'am. Okay. Please give me the cards. Thank you kindly. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> no, thank you. You're adorable. Uh, all right. In. Oh, there's several inns, huh? Is that just a bench? Yes, I like benches. <laughs> I do love it when that happens. Like when I say something. And then the character will essentially spell out what I just said. It's extremely, um, what do you call it, validating for me. Barret! Some fishing village this is. Ain't even allowed to take a rowboat out. Shinra's saying it's only a temporary prohibition. But people gotta eat. Anyway, short of stealing the boat and causing a scene, both us and our black robe friends are SOL. Waters here used to be teeming with fish, practically jumping to your boat, way people tell it. But ever since the offshore reactor came online, only things caught in the nets are monsters, and I ain't talking tuna. Shinra just couldn't help themselves. Had to go and poison the sea, too. Some fishing village this, Shinra's saying, short of stealing a boat and causing a scene. We should have never let them build a reactor in Sorry, ma'am. Um... Also, this thing about, you know, the uh, city built out of uh, boats and shit. Like, it's a common trope in fantasy, right? Uh, but I really like it, and it's one of those things where I don't know... Is there historical precedent for that? Like, was there ever a city built out of, out of commission ships? That actually strived and became a, you know, like, regular human settlement? Um, I don't know, but I do like that. I very recently learned about... I had another one of these um, in the Song of Ice and Fire again, like the Targaryen dynasty are Valyrian people, or well, they're Valyrian houses, like three Valyrian houses uh, in Westeros, the continent where the, the whole thing takes place. And you know, they rule over the entire continent essentially, like they become rulers even though they are total strangers to the land. And even phenotypically, right, they look different from people there and they actually managed to, through propaganda, turn that into uh, a cell. They're like, oh, we're like gods, you know, we're not like normal people. Look, we don't even look the same as you. So it's normal that we should rule over you. Also, that dragon spot. Um, and actually, very recently, and I, I always wonder, like, I, this is such a cool, you know, like, setting for a fantasy story. But was, is there ever, is there a, like, real life precedent? Did that sort of thing ever occur in human history? Um, and I kind of, I must say, my, my intuition was that no, because human beings are too fucking racist and stupid for that sort of thing to even be possible. Actually, not only did it happen, but, fun fact, where did it happen, and I'm sure it happened more times than that actually, but France, or proto-France, before it was called France, the Franks, who gave the name to the country, uh, were essentially, you know, foreigners put there initially uh, by the Roman Empire, and then they turned against them and, you know, we became independent and all that shit. Uh, but the interesting thing is that they were... So it was a whole, um, what do you call it, ethnicity, right? It was a few thousand, actually it was a few thousand warriors, so it might have been tens of thousands of, of people, maybe hundreds of thousands, I don't know, but it was a minority um, that ruled over at the, the, you know, like, peak of the uh, Frank, well, I guess the peak of the Frank Empire is like Napoleon or some shit, depending on how you count, but you know what I'm saying. Like, there was a state, the, a point in proto France history where a few tens of thousands of people ruled over millions of people, and they were from a different ethnic group. They were essentially strangers in this land. So, you know, fucking Targaryens ruling over um, Westeros. Which I think is fucking. I love it. And I'm sure that Martin, not necessarily, again, you know, the fact that we have one, I there is one case that I know of. Um, I'm sure it's happened actually elsewhere tons of times. When I told Zia about it, she said very rightfully so that um, there are many, even to this day, monarchies in Europe.
that are just the royal family is like descendants of generals from Napoleon or some other you know like conqueror uh, either Norway or Sweden I'm not sure which one is a famous case of that way the royal family is just descended from a French uh, general of Napoleon's uh, Alexander the Great did a lot of that too like when his empire crumbled it was often military generals so they came from Rome or one of the provinces but not necessarily that place anyway there's tons of examples in history I'm not saying Martin uh, used the French example in his writing but Elevators are only way up, it did happen but Wanda won't thank us if we storm it. she wasn't kidding when she said it was well guarded got any other ideas elevators are only way up is it that well guarded like two tanks and a few troopers we can take that Tifa but okay well we all right, let's try and finish exploring under Junon, uh, and then call it a night. Do all side quests for now. There's the mini game, but sticking around if there's no one left to fight. Oh, that's you, Isabel. I'll be with you next week, Isabel, I promise. I should not promise that, but I'll try real hard. And we can play, uh... Aerith! Word around town is Shinra's holding some kind of big event up top. Wonder what? It's not destroying the planet as Shinra did. What is what is? Maybe they were looking for a doctor. Sorry, Jerry. What 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 do you mean? The people here, they hate the lack of sunlight, but not me. I like it this way, though I'd never tell them that, of course. The Franks. Um. Word around town is. I don't know. I'm not enough of of an expert on these matters, but I actually kind of wonder. Um. I think those kinds of peoples. You know, like very um, expansionist and shit. I do wonder. Well, you know, it's all. It would not. No, of course they were way less. I know what. And I know what you mean. They were way less destructive than the modern Western world for sure. But still, I do think that essentially leaving shit alone, leaving you know like human settlements just do their thing and stuff, was less of a strain on the environment already back then than uh, everything you know like gigantic conquest comes with. Um, it means. You need a lot of food and shit. That means pushing into more, you know, productivist types of farming and stuff. Um, but of course, and you know, if it was just that, if it was just Franks and Mongols and all those uh, warlike peoples on Earth without all the crazy shit that, that the modern world um, has has made the baseline, then we'd be much better off uh, environmentally. Environmentally, when it comes to the environment and global warming and all that, for sure, you're right. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, they were not... I don't think they were exactly great people, the Franks, but... In any case, friends, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope my, um... My being uh, half dead was, uh... I didn't change things too much, and it was uh, still fun. I had fun! Uh, I realized, again, it was a whole stream of just side content. Um... But, yeah, you know, very early on when I started this, I was like, am I gonna try and play a remake without doing the side content? And I quickly realized, I just can't do it, I just can't do it, y'all. I love that shit. Also gives us more time to just shoot this shit and talk about very random things. Uh, <laughs> which again, might not be the, the part you like the most, but yeah, I know. It, uh, it was fun. Thank you, thank you so much, CA. Uh, thank you all for being here. I will see you on Tuesday for OG7, part 2. We're going back to that, and the funky accents, and everything. Uh, we can compare it with everything we've seen in Remake, we'll see how far we go. Uh, and until then, friends, be kind to each other, play more Final Fantasy, eat less animals, and remember that I love you all. Good night. <laughs>